Um, are there any additions, adjustments? Please hold. Yes. Yeah, we're missing that. Okay, are there any just Yes, go ahead, Duncan. What do you have? Um, I, I was hoping to give a very brief um, update on the uh, job search um, okay. for town administrator and uh, community economic development. Um, okay. And I would like to make sure, mm -hmm. given the email that Brian got from Frank and Giselle Eldred, that we keep that complaint <clears throat> on the front and center. Is that an agenda item or just no? Just just an awareness item that we should, um, you know, when, when, when we'll have passing of the torch that it shouldn't, I, I don't want to lose track of it. So okay, noted. If it gets added to the report or whatever, I just don't want to lose track of it. Okay. They've been hanging on for a long time. I'd like to take, um, take credit for all the money we're making since Rosemary has moved. Right. Okay, that's not an agenda item, though. Do you have any other agenda items? It's a reason to celebrate. That's it is. I do. I have a couple. Go ahead. Uh, naming of the was like eastern end of Sinclair Road. And uh, when the Vermont Studio Center is here, uh, they're also asking for an additional letter of support for the same project, uh, but addressed to the National Endowment for the Humanities uh, for a little bit more money for the same project. Okay, okay. anything else? Uh, I guess I have one more weekend. I think we can strike the uh, opportunities for public sculpture. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to actually postpone that one until uh, June. Yep. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Okay. Um, first agenda item, possible offer of an employment, employment or appointment. Someone would like to make a motion? I don't believe for motioning a possible offer of employment. I'm going to make a motion to enter into an executive session to discuss the appointment or employment of a public public officer or employee as allowed by one BSA 313 Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh-huh. Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. We are in executive session at 6.03. Session at 6.56. Hi, Brian. Is Donna with you? Um, okay, we're out and looking for Donna if you see her. Okay, bye. All I need is a Hi. <laughs> it was just a broad one. It was just really yeah, awkward. Yeah. That one. You know, I don't, I'm not comfortable with quiet. I have a one year old. We shouldn't be comfortable with quiet. Something wrong. You have a legacy. Thank you. I'm going to take that as a compliment. You should. No, no, no. Did she go up for a car? I don't think the lights are off. We're all good. You're sitting in the dark? I would like to tell you. Well, thank you very much for bringing me. Yeah, I had to come here straight. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Did I receive Did you all get the text that I was trying to buy? Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't believe you. Literally, no one believed you. Yeah, I have. <laughs> He does a lot of minutes. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and we have action coming out of the executive session. Are you good, Donna? Oh, sorry. You good? Uh, yeah. We were out of executive session at 6.56. <laughs> Okay, good now. Yep. Uh, next item on the agenda is possible offer of employment or appointment. I motion to authorize the chair of the select board to write a letter of employment for Carl Roger Rogers as emergency interim town administrator. I'll second that. I'll third that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have it. I motion now to authorize the chair to represent the select board in executing the offer of employment letter on behalf of the select board at a compensation rate of sixty dollars an hour. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I have it. Okay. On to the next agenda item. Um, review what? Not review invoices and orders, which I think we've done. Or if there's anything you want to add to that, Rosemary? Are we good? Invoices and nope. orders. Nope. Okay. Review and approve minutes from May first. So moved. I have one. I'll second it for the purpose of uh, discussion. Deal. Go. No. So I have one possible. Uh, correction. I'm not sure how we do this because I think Donna accurately reflected what was said, but I don't think it's <laughs> accurate. And Brian, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The minutes refer to a road name must be assigned if there are more than three houses, but it's actually more than two houses. Correct. It's more than two, or you could write it as three or more. Okay, that isn't the way it was explained before. So we'll just note it in this minutes, but it doesn't apply to our past minutes. Like it's not a correction on our last, past minutes because it reflects what was said. Because I think that's. But now it's was. noted in our new minutes. It's a clarification. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Select board issues and concerns. If nobody has anything, my, I do have a topic, which is the flower pots out front. Um, my only concern with the flower pots out front, they're lovely. I like seeing them there. Uh, I do have a concern about the tags in them. Um, I have a concern about specifically the uh, a, a business sponsoring them. I don't have a concern with the business sponsoring a flower pot. I just do about a business sponsoring a flower pot on municipal building property out front. I feel like we should be uh, neutral in all things. And if we're going to offer something, we should at least talk about offering it more extensively than, I, I didn't know that they were out there, by the way, uh, just noticed them when we were leaving our last meeting. Uh, so I think that if we're going to do something like that, it should be inclusive so we should offer to many but personally i don't love the idea of promoting a business on uh, municipal next to the next to this building essentially um so i wanted to bring it up here and see if folks would be interested in having a discussion about it or you know should we add it as an agenda item or no Let's add it as an agenda item to our next joint meeting because it involves the trustees. They don't have joint property. Meeting. Although in the interim time, <clears throat> could you work with Eric and 
get the advertisement signs removed until both owners of the property have a chance to weigh in on it. Sure, I can bring that up with Eric. I'm good with that if you guys are. And computer. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say I think it's worthwhile having a process if we're going to do stuff like that. Um, you know, people got to come and work through the process if we have a sponsorship. Uh, I think it is probably valuable to have certain things like that where people want to chip in and help out. But, uh, you know, just doing it without asking anybody is, is, you know, can lead to a lot of problems. Okay, uh, next agenda item. Next joint meeting agenda item. And Brian, you have it as a follow-up to talk to Eric about. Yep. Cool. Any other issues or concerns? Okay. Brian, you did say that you wanted to add an agenda item for renaming, possible renaming of Sinclair Road. Yeah, we have that at the end of the committee's okay. font. Yeah, I just want to, yep. to make sure. Okay. Um, public, uh, Jason, your report. Does Rosemary not have anything? Oh, sorry, Rosemary. Rosemary, what do you have? I passed out the budget status report. Um, we'll just go through this quickly. To date, we're at 73.23% spent of budget. And I have received the um, true up for the state school taxes. And the new, that's the new figure. And it's about $400 difference between that and what we had in the town report as year end budget. Higher? Oh, no, I don't remember. I think. It was about four hundred fifty dollars. I don't remember if it's higher or lower. Whether it's to our benefit or not. That's and the, that's a payment from the state. Yeah, if they do a true up in the end of October, in the end of April. As and you can see, that we are light on our late tax penalty revenue. That's because every a lot of people paid their taxes. Woohoo! And you'll see on the uh, tax report, we're at 97.52% collected. And last year at the same time, we're at 96.39%. And right now we have delinquent taxes of 138,000. And last year at this time, we had 201. Positive things. The payment from the state for maintenance to the grand less than equalized education grant unless that's a little bit above what our budgeted amount for yep. the current year is. And I think that's pretty that 13 5 is basically what we had in our before budget, isn't it? That's good. <clears throat> And the only other thing I had is um, I have a tobacco license for a color to my French smoke shop. Oh, that's the one on the right side. Yeah, on the right side. And we don't sign those anymore, but we need to approve them. Yes. Correct. I would move to approve the tobacco license. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have it. That's all you have to my hands? Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, next up is Jason, Public Works. How are you doing? Hello. So, and the for all else. Do you know if we have more or less green up day trash than last year? We have more tires, less bag trash. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think the relocation down to the skate park wasn't quite as. In the sun. when it when it was up on the village green, I think it was more activity. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is your sense. Oh, it's it's still at village green. I know, but but I, it seems like a lot of the focus was 
down at the skate park but where the truck was there. In the past, we have like a Canton Exchange and stuff was going on there. It seems as well, we're looking for a green up coordinator, Mark. Hint, hint. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks for that. Yeah. Say this year, uh, there was uh, less activity at both sites, technically. Uh, there was nothing really at the skate park, and it was just limited. Uh, I think there was like 30 bags that Mark had from the green, and most of it was all stuff that put bagged up and put on the, on the roadsides. Yeah, the guys pick up and then went around. So that's where most of it came from this year. Yeah, and then our current projects, the paving project, the bike right now, that's our main focus. And then we got the re in the shop for general maintenance and get it ready for the upcoming season. Uh, tomorrow we have MJAW training. Next grading job today. Yeah, Mark. Mark was up there getting all of the burn done. <laughs> I see. I forgot something in the upcoming project on my last report. It said winter road maintenance, so that's not. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, to discuss with the board, uh, send a plan purchase around for the work week. If we that that quote um, is a uh, higher than. Uh, yeah, we found the vendor at the municipal show in Barry this week, and they hadn't gotten back to me yet. With the quote that they um, rough number he gave me was about four dollars cheaper per piece than what uh, what does that come out to? How many teeth? There's about 60, 60, so be 240 bucks or something. And Would I'm they be an equivalent quality of steel? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're that's what you're saying. They're, they're equivalent to be more themselves or brands so that's why they would not put this invoice in for approval and then just take a little cheaper one once he gets back i mean and then uh move more around all set up for the second week of the end of the end of the car first go right through um and the excavator right now is all set up for June first so, uh, so all of these a lot. The new one is a uh, three hundred seven and a half, which is fifteen hundred dollars a month cheaper than uh, three eleven. Who's that crew? Thompson Fire and Garden. Oh, does it? Yeah, that's the final per month out of John Deere, Cat, and then Sam Fire and Garden. Yeah, I think I remember. So I would move to approve the plan purchase based on the 1710 listed with the understanding that Jason may well get a better price. So up to, up to. Up to. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Anything else, Jason? No. Uh, there was going to be a skate park thing. Uh, that particular, there's a little bit of discussion on the skate park, but there's also some, Casey has some questions about some other work that she wants done at the skate park that I'm, neither Jason or I were entirely clear on what that scope was. So we weren't really ready to present on it tonight. Okay, so not for tonight. Okay. Yeah. There is a uh, agenda item number seven though, Jason, on the skate park concrete bold half pipe. Yeah, if you want to hang out for that, that would be great. Okay. Good. Thanks, Jason. Good luck with play out. Good luck with all of it. So far everybody has. <laughs> yeah. Even Scott. Well, I don't think we were on the record when I gave you kudos to you for lighting a fire under pipe, but thank you for doing that. Yeah, that was a pleasant If you surprise. hadn't gotten them here now, we wouldn't have seen them for another three or four months. That was my fear. I was on a belt for the last month and said, all press for me that they were going to change it up. Good job. Yeah. 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 
Okay. Um, were there any other planned purchases, Brian? No, I didn't have any. Um, discussion of independent library funds. All right. So a couple meetings ago, we had some discussion about the disposition of the library's checking account. And that came up during a uh, discussion about another topic and uh, the board had some concerns. They asked Duncan to do a little bit of research on it. Duncan has his report for us, uh, which you got as a supplement, not as part of the packet. Um, this kind of brings us up to speed. Duncan, do you want to fill us in on your report? Uh, yeah, I I'll just try to be Brief. The, the library trustees got a copy of that as well. Um, so yeah, I think I think the key takeaways on that were as near as I can tell by looking at the land records and the old minutes, et cetera. In 1895, Article 11, the town voted to elect five trustees for staggered terms. Article 12, they voted the sum of 50 bucks for the library and its care of. Basically, from then right through to the current day, uh, the library trustees have been elected. Um, in 1982, the significant event was that the Oread Literary Club, uh, uh, the Johnson voters voted to accept a deed of conveyance for the library, the building and property from the Oread Literary Club in 1983. It was actually a deed from Oread Literary Club to the town of Johnson. There's two deed codicils which carry through um, on that, which everybody should be aware of. Any use, any other use of the property requires approval of the library trustees. And secondly, the operation and maintenance of the property shall be administered by the library trustees. Um, Sometime in the late 2000s, Rosemary, maybe you've got a better idea on when this happened. I, I couldn't remember. The library, we, we actually asked a bunch of the smaller committees to bring their little checkbooks in and yeah, run them through them. It's 2004, 2005. Well, it's 2004, five, gosh. Um, <clears throat> so early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. Um, <clears throat> The library trustees or the library board is a little different than many of the other boards and committees because of the fact that they have an elected board of trustees and there is specific statutory language pertaining to libraries. Um, there's basically two kinds of libraries as near as I can figure out. Um, there's a free public library, which the statute describes as being incorporated through the Secretary of State's office. <clears throat> and then there are municipal libraries, um, which I copied this, you know, the actual set of the, of the statutes there. <clears throat> um, I think the pertinent part of that section is the board shall consist of not less than five trustees who shall have the full power to manage the public library, make bylaws, elect officers, establish library policy, receive control, of and manage property which shall come, come into the hands of the municipality by gift, purchase, device, request, or otherwise. <clears throat> so I don't really answer these questions. The only concern that I had really when I read this and think about the about the checkbook that the library has is whether or not those that checkbook really should be going through the treasurer. The obvious concern and question is the endowment funds that the library has and whether or not there's not a sort of restriction in the endowment fund that limit it to the trustees. So I guess at the end of the day, as I thought about this, the thing that makes sense to me is trying to contact the Vermont Department of Libraries and see if they have any guidance and to talk with the current library trustees to see if you know, we have thoughts on. Yeah. And Stacy, you're currently the treasurer. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so 
Duncan is right about the library being is a little different because it's covered by state statute than say the rec committee or the communication something like that. Um, so he read you that quote from, from statute, and I thought Duncan in your report you had some questions about whether that covered actual funds, but it's actually the very next section there says. The trustees shall annually make a report to the annual meeting of the municipality of the condition of the library and of the management and expenditure of monies as have come into their hands. So I think that implies your owners. That, yeah. um, that the statute actually covers management of certain funds, non taxpayer funds, by the trustees. Um, and we manage the, this checking account in a similar way as. We manage the endowments. Um, and it's, it was definitely a mischaracterization in the April 17th meeting to make it sound like there's no like oversight by the town of these funds because you guys, I give you guys a report, a financial report for the, from the library trustees every year, which you put in the town report, which gives the accounting of the three endowments and the checking account that we hold at the community bank. Um, also, those accounts are reviewed by the town auditor every year. And there are two signers on the checking account, one being me as a treasurer and the other one being Rosemary. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, I don't know. There, I, I watched the video of the meeting from the 17th. Um, I kind of thought it was, <laughs> kind of spun into conjecture about the, you know, the checkbook that was floating around. That's not, that's totally inaccurate. Um, you all receive a report every year. It's gone through by the town auditor every year. It's, everything is above board. I didn't really appreciate, you know, the term embezzlement being thrown around kind of casually at that meeting. I did not appreciate that. Um, you know, as Duncan said, we're elected, selected position, just like you guys. And I, for one, take the responsibility very seriously. There are symptoms for all of this. <clears throat> and, you know, I have no way of knowing what you don't know. But, yeah. you know, there are symptoms. For um, so there is oversight by the town on these accounts. And the reason that we keep a checking account is because grant funds and some donations that we receive are not administered in a fiscal year the way the town operates in a fiscal year. For example, one grant that we regularly get runs January to January. So we receive the funds in January, we have until the next January to spend the money as it's been earmarked. What we can't have happen is in at the end of June, when the town's fiscal year ends, money unspent for that grant be absorbed into the town pot, right? Right. Um, same for donations. So if we receive a donation um, for the library, you know, specifically for the library, but it doesn't get spent, let's say we receive it on June 1st, it doesn't get spent within the fiscal year, we can't let it just be absorbed into the town budget. Mm -hmm. So that's why we keep a checking account. Um, the way we work it is that as that money is spent, we then turn that money over to the town to pay for whatever was purchased through the town because all the purchases take place in the town. So there's very few checks that are written that aren't just straight to the town of Johnson. And that includes the that includes the spent the spending that goes outside of the budget. So this is the there's very, very rarely any spending outside of the budget. So in this checking account, which has existed for decades, mm -hmm. um, there was a certain amount of money that was used to create set up the account, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Um the, I consulted with Joanne Benford, who was the treasurer. Editor. Yeah, okay. And she said that this money, there was some money in the account 
uh, that was left by Claire Farrington when she died in 1936 that's separate from the endowment she set up from the library. Mm -hmm. And that money was in that checking account and it was kind of just sitting. It was the only money that was there that wasn't part of sort of a current grant or donation that was going in and then out of the account. That had been sitting there for decades and decades. Well, she died in 1936, so a long time. Um, there were no restrictions on how it was supposed to be used, no instructions on how it was supposed to be used. And when this year we have a laundry list of maintenance and repair projects on the building, and this in particular, this uh, insulation project came back, the quote came back far higher after they did an inspection than we were expecting. We had $7,500 in the budget as a line item for <laughs> building maintenance. And so I suggested and the trustees voted to use because we felt like it was an important project, you know, you know, energy efficiency and everything, um, to use some of that money, to use some of that money, twelve thousand dollars of that money, to pay for to let the project go ahead. I thought it would be a sort of non-controversial use of the money, um, and yeah, so that's what we decided to do: to use that money so that the you know the full cost isn't on the shoulders of the taxpayers um, because there is a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, so that will leave 4,000, we use 12,000 for the insulation, that'll leave 4,000 left from that money that was just sort of in that checking account. But everything else that's in that checking account is a current um, grant or donation. So I know you had some questions about how we process donations, like if there's a donation made to the Johnson Public Library, what happens to it? So sometimes, if a, most of the donations we get are very small or relatively small, relative, but between 100 and 500 dollars. If Jean knows that she will be able to spend that donation very quickly, like if it's given for books and she has a book order ready, she'll turn that donation right over to Rosemary because she's making an order, right? If there's no restrictions or no instructions that come with that donation, and she's not, and the, depending on the timing of when they get it in the fiscal year, she might not, we might put it in the checking account because we're not sure we can spend it within the fiscal year. So at the end of the, or right before the fiscal year ends, we total up every purchase that has been made through the town. Um, with grant money or donation money, and we write a check to the town of Johnson um, for our final budget. You know, so that's how it works, and that's why we have a checking account. Um, that's what we use it for, because we can't let those that grant money that's earmarked just be sort of absorbed. Into right. The yeah. Perhaps. That makes sense. It's not operating. It's it's earmarked for something to your point yeah right. yep and we might have you know on a different cycle mm -hmm. than the towns do you know where in the town's budget that check that's written from this account fills up where sorry so you said you total mean? up everything at the end of the fiscal year and you write a check to the town do you it's know it's like reimbursing the town for money that the library has already spent It'd have to be in library revenue, I would think. Right, so we'll just show up. There's a grant and donation line item. Oh, okay. income. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a buffer for that line item. Kind of. So well, make, it makes make fiscal years and and because well, it's money we already spent, like it's money in, money out. Yeah. Right. So I, I have a question and a comment. Um, please understand that um, the concern about the checking account and the possibility of, of embezzlement was not directed at anyone. Um, this is, there are numerous towns in the state of Vermont where there have been embezzlements. Um, there was no suggestion whatsoever that the library trustees were doing that or about to do that, but the the concern is that if the 
checking account is under the same federal ID number as the towns, then Rosemary as treasurer legally, I think, I think is responsible. Um, and if, if somebody did embezzle, the worst thing that could happen, um, it, it would be Rosemary and ultimately the town that would be on the hook for that. So one of my questions to you would be, is that checking account under the same federal ID number as the not. towns? So the all the three endowment accounts and that checking account are under a different tax ID number. Okay. That tax ID number is the original tax ID number that the library had when it was independent from the town. And as I understand it, the reason it wasn't changed is because because of that statute where the trustees have this separate responsibility to manage those non-taxpayer funds. And so it's under a different tax ID. And I would just request or suggest that you do that kind of homework before you say things like that public about people who are volunteering and it is referring to the person who keeps the checkbook that you were talking about. um so i would yeah just ask that before we throw that stuff out there in a public meeting you do that kind of homes because that's all information that you guys should have you get that financial report you get that you know, i'm assuming you get a report from the town you know that's Stacey, I, I totally hear your perspective, like thinking about being you in that situation. I totally get where you're coming from. Like sincerely, that must have not been fun to read and think about and get more information about since then too. To hear about from other people when I wasn't at the meeting. Yeah. And to be fair, like to be fair to Jasmine in that situation, like we were asking questions that you know, she didn't have the knowledge of the accounts the same way you do. Um, so I agree with you that maybe we should have just called timeout, done some research and picked it back up. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we were being diligent and getting you that approval on the installation. Um, so there were a couple of factors, but you're right. Uh, like from my perspective, I'm just gonna speak for myself, not the board. You're right. We could have been more careful about the way we presented and the board doesn't have all of the information about library operations because we shouldn't right you right like you have a you have your own trustees actually i i'm glad you bring that because um the trustees um well i'll just say that since matt left the select board no select board member has been to a single one of our trustee meetings, which happen every month. Matt would come periodically, I don't know, every quarter, about every quarter. He would attend one of our meetings. He was really good about keeping in touch with us about any questions or concerns or ideas that the select board had um, about the library and its operations and its management. Um, and that was really nice to have that kind of liaison. So I would encourage you to have one of you or someone or as many of you as want to come periodically attend one of our trustee meetings and then you might have more information and a better idea of how things work. Um, in, 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 an, in an effort to try to um, close that gap of knowledge, we created a memorandum of understanding uh, we invited you guys. Uh, we invited you guys over to do the assessment. We did have another team over to the assessment. Jasmine and I came and met with Brian to talk about the understanding misunderstandings of the assessment. We made those corrections. We sent them your way. We did not hear back on that. Jasmine did come talk about the windows. She was encouraged to go to find grant opportunities. We went to find grant opportunities. We then came up, ended up why we're trying to pay for the windows to the tune of about sixteen thousand dollars, which we have communicated. Then the insulation came as a big surprise. Like we were estimating like seven or eight hundred dollars, and it turned out to be from our original estimate, right? Or what somebody had an expert had come and looked at it, and it turned out to be a much bigger project. 
So I want to say we feel like we've communicated, but it necessarily hasn't been reciprocated since in response to the efforts that we've made for Emily and Ruth and understanding that assessment. Um, so we encourage you to, we, I know we are working with Mark and Mark did come. Um, we do, we, we were including him on emails and stuff. I don't, they're just, it's kind of up in the air about, is it a town building, is it not a town building in terms of oversight is great. So if we have the checking account, you guys want to have oversight, we need to do something else to make the checking account more comfortable select order up and up or or have us advice from the Vermont Department of Library their legal expert or something whatever that takes but if, if we need to make sure that these like the, the building is maintained and if how do we do that in this in this effort so I know you don't understand the processes but it's also in all the meeting minutes and everything so and just one more thing I don't want to take too much time but one thing that came up that I saw in this meeting on the 17th or maybe, sorry, I think it was in your report, um, was that the audit done by the town auditor isn't a real audit. Um, I consulted with Joanne Benford, who, when she was library treasurer, was in the kind of uh, unusual situation of being the town auditor and being the library treasurer. And at that time, the town did have a CPA firm come in and do an independent audit. I would also encourage you to do that um, yeah we welcome that we've and I think that is a good idea. three years I'm so not... i've been the uh treasurer for the library for eight years and it's never been audited by an outside firm but yeah we library. we approved a firm to do the library account specifically, we approved we approved a firm to come in and do that for us. I don't know that we have it on a schedule for the town, <clears throat> but the town would include anything in our town report. It so it would include the library. Um, so you will be hearing more about that. I'm not sure when you'll hear more about that, but you will, because uh, we agree. I think we do need to have somebody outside doing auditing of all things town. Um, yeah. Can you guys um, say that you're copying Mark on your emails, which is great. Communication is great. I, ha I haven't I have I haven't been copied on anything. Um, I don't know if that gets sent a lot of emails or not. Mm, I, so, I do get things. Well, I acknowledge like communication is a two-way street, and um, maybe I could reach out more for any board member. Um, and that would be great. I, when I was in the meeting last year, we we with Jasmine, we had talked about Mark being the liaison, and that was chosen that by Mark. First, I've heard of it. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, why, that's why Mark was being copied, but it's welcome to, we'd love to give it all to you. Yeah. It, it wouldn't hurt any information for any board member. I've never gotten in trouble for sharing information. Um, and I'm sorry if you felt attacked. I, I think I asked probably the most questions in that meeting uh, simply because, yeah, coming up with $12,000 out of an account with a checkbook that I didn't have the answers for. I was just asking questions. Oh, I think maybe it was maybe it was hard Fine. for Jasmine because she the question should have gone to you as she was here. I was just asking a lot to try to comprehend it. I don't think I stepped outside of board responsibility of trying to do the best they could for the town. Um, but I'm sorry if you felt attacked by oh, I totally open to any questions you have. I think I'm more referring to the sort of accusatory tone that I felt like was being taken um, during that meeting when watching the video of it. So question, I'm open. Anytime you have any questions, I will come and answer the questions. That's, I have no problem. All right, I have one. I do too. <laughs> um, with regard to the grants, I understand your concern about the calendar year versus the fiscal year and um, the timing of grants. We have other organizations within our entities that have that same problem. And the Conservation Commission comes to mind as one. Um, what we always do in that case is the Conservation Commission or whoever would say, we have an outstanding grant amount, historical societies, another. We have an outstanding grant amount that money needs to be set aside and the town has absolutely no issue doing that 
So it's not like the money would be absorbed into the town budget. We just need to know if, if it hasn't been. So if, well, I guess my question out of all this is, <clears throat> Who is making the application for those grant funds? Is it the library committee itself and the town is not involved in any way, shape or manner? So who, who, are the, who do the funds belong to? The funds belong to the, I don't know exactly what I answer that. That's kind of a sticky question for very big, uh, very, this is what I mean about the library. Municipal, as a municipal library kind of being a unique, in a unique situation. Um, so for example, like the ARPA uh, grants that are being applied, like that's a very big grant that just goes through the town. We don't, as trustees, you know, that's going to all go entirely through the town. Um, I'm more referring to very few smaller grants and donations um, because the these very big ones and also the next one, the one department of library grants. Department of library grants. Yeah, so those things will be administered to the town because of their size, and I think that was the request of the funders. Um, they go through the municipality. So the grants, I mean, the money is for the Johnson Public Library, which is a municipal library, and is connected to the municipality. Who does the money belong to? I'm not sure how to answer that. Well, as, as a general thing, the money of any grant, if it's a municipal library, it's the grant is made to the municipality. And my feeling is that those funds should flow through a checking account that is in the hands of the treasurer. That's just my thought. But the thing is, we're not going to solve this here um, because we're just thinking what we, we what we believe to understand. And the thing is, if they have their own tax ID and they're applying using their own tax idea, ID, I don't think we can answer that. I think somebody who has an illegal opinion could answer that better than we could. Well, it's, as I said in my in my report, the Department of Library, the town of Johnson can't be the only community right, right. where this situation exists. So maybe that's true. We did talk to another town um, about how they're managing these kinds of things, and they were doing the same as us, and based on the same statute. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily mean they're doing it, but. Well, I also understand um, the Department of Libraries just hired a new position to deal with these situations. The oh. person has just been hired. Okay. I think that would be great to know. Yeah, so it, it's, I think this is an ongoing discussion and it's happening at a state level. And so they hired a person that this is the kind of stuff they would. Okay. I don't know if well, I think one of these, I don't think they're consulting or something. I don't remember what. So for. For next steps on this, I, I mean, it sounds like engaging with that person is the right thing to do. Um, do you have, does anyone have a preference on who would be the follow up? Who would follow up on that? I think their liaison should do it. Probably better. Okay. Um, I do have like two kind of just general questions. One of them I asked Jasmine uh, in the meeting. She said, Well, our grant funds are coming here. And I said, Who's applying for the grant? Um, and I guess where that came from is the percentage of the library's budget that's paid for by the taxpayers. If, if it's all Gene's time that's going into it, uh, it just seemed weird that the town taxpayers would be paying for the salary to go into this account. But I, like, I understand, and you've been super clear on on the account so i think that's kind of out of my mind it was just a question i, I had um and you said like, there's about four thousand dollars in that account so i guess my question is how fluid is that account because it's grown every year over the past 10 years and in the town report it had twenty seven thousand dollars in it 
Um, if the library board of trustees had decided to spend 12,000 and a tiny bit on the installation, so it should be about 15,000 in it. You're okay. saying there's four, so I'm just wondering if it's like a really yeah. smooth count. But no. now, so I'm saying there was a base amount that was in there that was not current a long time ago, was not current grant for donations from the current year, right? So that amount was somewhere that was set of uh, 17. I don't think 16,000. We're spending 12,000 of that on the insulation, which leaves 4,000 of that base money that was just in the account, not earmarked for anything. Yes. The rest of the money in that account is from current grants that are currently being spent and current oh, donations, recent donations that are yet to be spent. So that's why the amount. Kind of goes up and down because it goes up as we receive grant funds and donations, and then it goes down as we spend that money and turn it over to the tenant. So there's money going in, money going out. Okay. You know how much it pains me to think that that money's been in the checking account for 87 years. <laughs> not, not a high interest. Yeah, account. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> but that's where not yeah. where I can tell you that. Joanne said that when she took over the accounts as treasurer in 1985, it was it's been sitting there. They don't they haven't spent anything out of it, at least for that long. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is helpful. Thank you for all of that. We still have the outstanding question that Mark is going to follow up on in terms of um, ownership of funds that are under the other tax, the library's taxpayer number, how, what does Town of Johnson liability and oversight look like for those funds? You will be in contact with me when you hear from this newly created person. We can look into what, I'll look into their contact information. Yeah. Because I'm not sure it's a consultant or a full employee, but we'll find it. No, that would be what I, I would just make the comment that since it's Department of Libraries, Maybe the query would be better coming from the library than from a select board member. I'm but, fine with that. <clears throat> well, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's fine. That's fine. Well, maybe I mean, yeah. 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 Maybe just keep me in the loop and yeah. help this person down. And see you could keep their answer. everybody in the loop, but just know if you email the full select board, they can't email you back with other select board members. But information is not going to hurt, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're falling behind. Um. Next up is thank you again for that. Next up is the library trustee resignation. Jen Burton submitted her resignation. Uh, motion to accept Jen Burton's resignation from the library board of trustees. Sending her a card, thanking her for her time and. Does the library want to post the position for that? Or do we want to have the town post the position? Uh, it will be appointed by the select board. What do they want to have? We are fine either way. I had reached out to Beth and Brian, and they were there. Either way, it's fine. All right, town holds it. Good. Okay, perfect. So if the town gets recommendations, does the library board want to review those and make a recommendation? The town should post it <clears throat> referencing to let the chair of the library trustees know not. They shouldn't respond to the town of Johnson. They should respond to the trustees with their interest directly. And then you can refer them to us when you're ready. We'll appoint to fill out the remainder of their term. Yep. And then we'll be elected. Well, by state statute, we can only appoint until the next election. So ah. when would her term be up normally, do you know? Yeah, I think she's been in two years. In two years. So next next year, Rosemary, am I right on this? Next year, we'd have to have an election to. We'd have, we'd have two trustees be elected. Okay. For five years and then for the balance of the oh, yeah. balance of it, yeah. 
okay. for two or three years. Her term expires March 26th. Oh, 26. 26. March of 26th. <clears throat> All right. I think we have a motion. I don't know if we have a second. Yeah, we had a second. Um, so we would appoint to fill the rest through March. And then at town meeting, we would elect for the remainder of the term. Okay. Um, any discuss any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. Um, public sculptures is being removed from the um, agenda. Vermont Studio Center. All right. Uh, is the waiting room still enabled? Yep. We have a standard letter for that, right? I was gonna ask. And that was my intent, certainly. So it will be a standard list. Should be. So we a little bit of detail about this. Uh, we received a, a email request from Vermont Studio Center from Elizabeth. Ogeron, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, you know, forgive me, uh, asking for a letter of support for the community revitalization, the CRRP. Uh, we've received a couple other letters. In order for an entity to be eligible for that grant, they have to receive a letter of support from the uh, local municipality. Uh, and they are interested in applying for that grant for a uh, corner house project, another remodeling project of uh, another one of their properties. Uh, they more recently today added uh, that they're also interested for the same project in applying to a similar grant with the National Endowment of the Humanities. And I believe that Elizabeth is on Zoom if we have any questions. Any questions for Elizabeth? Studio Center is a nonprofit, right? She says yes. Does that ease your pain? Because you said you didn't want to support town support of businesses the last time. Because they're a nonprofit, that makes them not a business. Well, I'm going to motion for both scenarios that the town send the standard letter of support, the same one that was sent to the last two businesses in town, um, or the Vermont Studio Center CRPP letter. That's the one that you worked with, Brian. We have a motion and a second from Duncan. Any other discussion? Elizabeth, is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, just my gratitude. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for your quick response. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thanks, Elizabeth. Good luck with your project. Thanks, uh, guys. Have a great night. Oh, All right. Hold on before, before you leave. On, Evan's motion was for the CRRP grant. He said for both. He said for both. Did he? Said both. Okay. That's what at the end you said. I did at the end say yeah. single. I okay. started out with both. You're good. You did start out with both. Okay. All right. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Bye. Um, okay. The noise, noise ordinance waiver for Willow Crossing. Um, this happens every year. Move to approve. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Naming of the private road off Collins Hill. Uh, can you give me the correct line with it? Angus Road. Uh, Angus, is it Angus, Angus Drive. Drive. Yeah. Motion to name private road off Collins Hill, Angus Drive. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Skate park RFP for the concrete bold half pipe. All right. So the skate park, uh, we had supported a grant for this, but this, they're getting ready for construction on a kind of a continuation of the ramp, the concrete ramp that they have there, uh, which will add, add a half pipe bowl thing uh, off to the side. Um, you know, with approval, they're, they're ready. They've done a fundraising for it. They've gone up for grants and they're ready to start seeking construction bids. Is this what they wanted the top soil or gravel for? I believe so. And that's what I wanted clarification on their town. So I'm going to need that. I think we had decided previously that we were supportive okay. of okay. using that top soil for this project last we talked. Sure. My, my recollection was ditch cleanings would go down there, but the public works crew wasn't going to be driving machinery down there and moving it and everything for providing material. We agreed that the ditching material would be saved for this project. That's my comment. Beyond that, don't recall. The material is staged down there in paper. Is there any reservations for you on? There is some other thing that she reached out to me for, and that was for cobblestone and straw fabric. So I would like to know. Additional materials? But does she have it in her budget? She wants to donate. But I don't want to. I personally don't want to donate to one pay and not donate to all of them. So if we're going to donate to one, I want to donate. And so I think that uh, material should come out of the skate park's budget. I'm only one member. Do we have any idea what the what the volumes are? Or the... Three three loads of fresh or three quarter of fresh and rocked, three loads of three quarter inch uh, inch gravel, and seven of the wide. Pro fabric, but I was Casey, I unmuted you. Thank you. Yes, no, those are two different projects. Uh, so stop, roll, roll, roll the tape back. Sorry for any confusion. But no, for the half pipe project, the only the, the town uh, support that we asked for uh, was the ditch dirt, which we've gotten. Um, we also, I think, asked for uh, if we needed help moving that pile of, of dirt that has already been brought to the park, um, we might need help, you know, <clears throat> moving it on site. Uh, and then the second aspect was help with planting grass uh, on the, the grass berm that surrounds this feature. And my, my recollection is that that didn't seem like a, a huge problem. Um, but, you know, that was that was quite a while ago and so that that part of the request is still in the air okay thank you casey for clarifying okay so and, and what's up now is simply uh, approving the rfp so that we can move ahead and get a contractor right so the ask at the moment is just for the rfp not for any other not any other ask at the moment, simply approval of the RFP. Right. If we have the we have gravel on site already, uh, we might need help moving it over, maybe. And um, I do recall that the town said they might help with uh, <clears throat> getting the grass going, grass seed or so forth, uh, on the grass berm that, that goes around this little half pipe. But that's, you know, that's down the road. Yep, so the ask for now is the RFP. Right. So you don't have anything, Jason, at the moment yet. It'll come up would, again later, but not right still, now. She's still on right now. Yep. yep. I would ask for more clear email in the future. 
If I have the emails. Then... Did you get that? He's asking for more clarity in the email. He thought there was an immediate need in, in an email apparently from earlier. No, no, that that I'm I'm sorry for any confusion, but no, that's uh, that's at least a month away, and it's in a, for a different part of the park. Okay. So clarity for in future uh, and for now board RFP. Are there any questions on the RFP? No questions. Anyone like to make a motion or not? I have questions I'll for Casey. I'll make a motion that we uh, post the RFP for the uh, skate park committee. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Can I ask for a, what's hopefully will be a friendly amendment change and strike my name from the RFP? Oh, yes. It should say town administrator without a name, please. I like that friendly amendment. Is that accepted, Shane? That is friendly, yes. And Mark, Mark <clears throat> give a thumbs up. Okay. Good call. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. It, it should also be struck under the next line down. It, it appears in a few places. It's, yeah, yeah, throughout. We'll strike it throughout. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those are aye, Mark? Yes. I have it unanimously. Um, NEMS update. Scott. Oh, thanks for waiting. Welcome. Thank you. Think, are, are we good with Jason? You can stay if you want. I don't care. There's time. I'm about three topics that we have, but I can wait. Go ahead. You can get another year. Uh, still <laughs> go ahead, Jason. Yeah. My ask well, we had a brief conversation about this the last meeting, and the board was talking about getting it up to me for working in committees or not, we had done. But as far as more materials in the future, I would like clarity. Are we donating or are we not donating? Bring it to us when you have the requests and we will pick it up at the next agenda, in the next agenda. If you have if you have any hesitation at all, anything you have, if you has have hesitation or don't want to make the call, just bring it to bring it to me. I'll make sure it gets on the agenda. I don't want to make a call. I just spending money out of you are not spending your money out of your budget to purchase things on behalf of a committee unless you have approval to do so. And I would suggest you don't probably want to do that. <laughs> uh, so getting ditching material piled up somewhere is very different than you using materials that you've spent for other purposes. Yeah, I, I would distinguish it between labor and time and free materials versus having to, go out, having to go out and purchase something for a product. Yeah. yeah. To me, if you had like re ditched the road and a committee could use a culvert or something that you were tore out, it's completely different than going and getting a culvert out of your new culvert stash. Does that make sense? I understand. Yeah. I Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thank Jason. Good night. All right, Scott. For all the facts, for automating um, the My mission here tonight is twofold. Um, one, on your May 1st meeting, we were creating two design contracts. We did that. So we have a, we did it during COVID, but we now are going back to having a master copy of the contract that is signed with ourselves in five towns together because the dollar figures are contingent upon all five towns approvals. Um, the other, so I have that copy, we can sign that quickly. The other one is because there are new members on the board, I just wanted to go over a little bit of how we're set up, what we do, and we have a major change in the contract that we presented this year. And the reason I want to give you the reasons for that. First of all, before the ambulance is a private, not for profit corporation. Um, you're not a municipality only. And um, July, June 30th, we finished 20 years of service here at Johnson. 
you dunk it into the ground. And yeah. It's different set. Don't tell there. me it was 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one select board member wrap up there 20 years ago. And that's crazy for it. Um, that was in 2020. Two, it was 20 years or 2023, it'll be 20 years. Well, um, it'll be June 20th, 23. Yeah, 23, we finish our 20th year. So this contract is for the 21st year. I gotcha. Okay. So uh, when we started, we had an oversight committee with quarterly meetings with members from each um, town select board. Over the years, get to the point where one or maybe nobody showed up. So we changed the contract to that we would come to each town twice a year. Um, we have found that communication is key when we're a separate entity. Um, we've taken over 200 um, territories that other services were in and the main problems were communications. And we don't want that to happen, that's why. Um, we put that in contract and like it says that we hold it to that. Um, so in 20 years of service, okay, this year, um, right now our call volume has been April 30 of the 636 calls out of Johnson. 22, we we're providing each way to other towns and we received each way seven times. Last year, um, we received mutual aid between 70 and 80 times. And that's why we added additional crews. Um, we needed to get, get out to a higher volume before we could really make it affordable for towns to pay for those additional crews. And so we're on track for maybe 20 to 25 mutual aid calls received. Um, I know at, at three of those seven calls this year, we were providing mutual aid to another town, so we had to have mutual aid come in this area. So we've drastically reduced mutual aid. By because of those calls? Um, Meaning you went out on mutual aid, and because you were out on those calls, you had to have mutual aid yeah, coming? Yeah, That's what you're saying? Okay. I gotcha. But that's not, it's the increase in call, less calls. So last year we had 1,736 calls this year, where right now it will be over 1,900 calls at the Stone Station at the present rate. It's a busy little place. We've also got uh, some new protocols where we have. Um, and that's for the five towns, Scott? Yeah. And early April, we had um, five calls within 10 minutes, and we had two crews. Um, so two crews went out. Um, we had a third crew of local people that came in and took one call to Cambridge, made, um, came in and covered us under mutual aid. And one of the calls was on the Fargals and the Eden. And so we were able to cover that from our station in Troy. Um, so it's, we're finding in the Newport area, we, Newport Ambulance started as Newport Country and Newport Town, Newport City Town, Coventry. And then we took over Derby Derby Line, well, Johnson the second, then Derby Derby Line, and then Island Palm, Brighton area lost their service. So we ended up um, building a um, location in the area as well. So we have four locations now. And it actually works out much better, better because we are providing our own mutual aid. Um, we know the crews are sitting there if a crew doesn't show up. And a lot of times we'll shift an ambulance. If Corey is out, we'll shift an ambulance from Newport down that location. So if we have a um, call down there, we can get to it quicker than we have to respond to Newport. And we can do the same thing here, shift Troy if we don't have a lot going on down toward. And then we also have the special pay um, that we're offering people if we have additional transports. Um, at a special base, people will, um, will come in to do transports. So we are not using a 911 ambulance for any, tram uh, any transport. The 911, 911 ambulance is exclusively. 491 call. So that's all working quite well. Um, 
the change that we did have because of that having three ambulances at the station, we don't have our previous contracts that people in our ambulances, paramedics, or advanced EMTs. We added EMTs because we can't guarantee if we have to call in a third crew that there's going to be an AEMT or paramedic available. We are fully staffed at the present time, but there's just not that many paramedics available in Vermont. We read about it in the news all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but we are very pleased that we are um, fully staffed. We have one person who moved up from southern Vermont. Um, I still believe wanting to work with Johnson didn't have an opening, so they are looking to move more presently, and they are guaranteed the next full time position at Johnson. We like had people in waiting for or in person, not in waiting, which is the case. So that contract um, was changed for that reason. Just wanted to make sure that um, our income is up. Um, from last year because of the call volume, which is good because this um, budget was very hard for us to put together knowing COVID money is funding is coming to an end. And we did get some COVID funds at the beginning of the year. Um, but even with that funding, um, our budget is ahead of schedule, right? Quite a percent over um, without those COVID funds. So we're in good shape. If we decide we don't want to do business in Johnson anymore, or if you as select boards say we don't want you anymore, the assets and liabilities of the Johnson Station is very low to the town. Uh, so you can decide how you want to proceed from there. The good news is we're building a big that's that pay for. Um, we have a long, four year long left on one of the three ambulances there. So there's not a lot of, of liabilities to cover the assets that you would be getting if that does happen. Uh, we were hoping this year that we would see an increase in Medicare and Medicaid funding. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, if Medicare and Medicaid is fully funded, we won't have to ask the job to pick up the city of the bank. Uh, that's not going to happen in our life. Um, so that is why we request funding from the families. And then July 1st and Saturday, we are going to be having a celebration of 20 years. We will get an invitation about the sports like words, and we will be advertising. Um, for people to come and enjoy, um, enjoy the festivities. Uh, our helicopter will be doing a landing so people can tour and take a look at the helicopter. Um, they can look at an ambulance, see why it costs $60,000 for a stretcher in the ambulance. Um, we just did order a new ambulance and we were able to use our old stretcher to fit into the new ambulance for here. So we fit under 18,000 for the land once compared to almost 180 if we could use the stretcher. We do a black helmet program, scar seat program, CPR training, um, our months of things being discussed right now for that day. Hope a bunch of you want. Cool, that's good stuff. Has there been any comments? Anybody heard anything? I'll, I'll say that um, people are very happy to have been able to go get COVID shots there. Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's true. That's been super. I, I hopefully that was the way you did COVID help finance. You got you got some reimbursement for that. I mean, I got two shots there, but it's very, very nice for people in town. You'd have that little sandwich board out. Yeah. We also were sent all over the state to do homebound shots. Really? Um there is only three services in the state that cover the whole state of the yeah. So that was a lot of our income control because mileage, they said the mileage rates nationally um, mm -hmm. and the cities, they don't travel very far. We would put two miles on. That's a real mm -hmm. shop. Um, so the only other thing I would ask, see, we appreciate the support from all of us. Mm -hmm. And anytime you hear of anything, if there is anything, you can find an intermediate or just make a call. Yeah. I think no news is good news. 
And yeah. for me, it's no news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty much 20 years in London. Scott, when we started 20 years ago, did, did, did NEM start with a single ambulance or were there two? We've always had two. Oh, and we brought in third, uh, third, probably five or six years into that. Um, hopefully, we won't need four right away because that would call for increasing the size of the building. But we are fortunate that um, we have good neighbors to work with. And it's also nice knowing that we're the neighbors of North Coast now as well. So we're the largest geographically, we're the largest ambulance service in the state. Our line is not there because it's not enough people. Okay. Yeah. So would you mind joining us? Yeah, and there's the same it's version. The same exact contract. Sorry to have approval to sign it. Yep, happy to. Um, okay, yeah, sounds good. Any other questions for Scott? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, other the fact that yeah. I can't believe I've seen it. You're yeah. not questioning it. Are you? <laughs> no, well, I believe that. Statementing it. Think it took us, what, three years to get the new building up here? Yeah. Um, we signed a contract. We were called in December between the Troy and the Jay area. We got the approval in mid-January. And we moved into the building on April 9th. It was busy seven, a couple months trying to put that all together. <laughs> if you've been basically in charge for 20 years? Well, I was on a high park slide board and sort of in charge of going to Newport. I met with the state of Vermont got the right recommendation. I see Brad Reed was big into it here. Brad, right? Yes, he was on the oversight. He was on the oversight. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, and then after five or six years, I was opening on the new board board and they asked me to join that board to create a contract. And one person from these five towns has to be on the board of directors mm -hmm. of the new board. Mm -hmm. So I am that person that just finished. And so been working with them for the full 10 years. So I'm vice president at this point. Thank you. I'm good. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Okay, I have a proposal that we move things around a little bit. Um, that we put dilapidated buildings next, followed by animal control health officer, followed by naming of Eastern Sinclair Road. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So now I'm mixing it all up. If you can keep it all straight, let's do it. I can. So it's dilapidated buildings next. Animal control, yeah, dilapidated then animal control, and then the new agenda item of naming Eastern Sinclair. Okay. So uh, briefly, we've been uh, working on our pursuing cooperation with folks on three different locations currently with our for our dilapidated building ordinance. It's two on uh, Stern Street, the beginning of 100C, and then the third one farther up 100C. Um, we're receiving uh, some voluntary compliance on the on each of the locations, uh, and so we haven't escalated to. What does that mean? Like, what does voluntary compliance mean? What are they act actively doing? So the ones on Stern Street, uh, they are committing to cleaning up within a month and a half. Am I correct? Yeah. It's so June. June 19th. So I've been in communication with Chris and Jeff and Nedrek, the son of the actual owner of the property. Um, we've been in communication back and forth. Then he wanted to copy the ordinance and he wanted to renew the lawyer. Communication with him has been um, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes hard. Uh, but uh, after several weeks of going back and forth, uh, I finally got him to actually give me a time period yeah. of when he will be removing. All the remnants of burnt out building from the from the site, uh, and he told me that it would be a month and a half. So I said, "Okay, how about June 19th? 
And he said, yep. And I, and I said, I'll be following you, you know, in a couple of weeks to see where you're at. And uh, Lauren from there. Um, his father has had some small health issues. He was out of state for a couple of months. Uh, his father had a couple of major surgeries to deal with those health issues. Um, but he's back in state now and uh, is hopefully in uh, events as strong where I am. And he uh, works through the conversation that we've got. Did you get a commitment on the second building too, or just the first building? Just the first. So are you talking about the, the other house next door? Uh, no, we haven't. We have not started the conversation with them. I, I figured the primary focus would be to get you know, all the from the buyer and, and make it, you know, make it not. And yeah, um, I asked about that because we've been asking about these since before the fire. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm specifically con specifically concerned that if we don't give notice on both buildings, that it resets the, I don't want to give an out for either building. And starting the timeline for both buildings would be ideal. And if he has people there who are actually cleaning up the first building, then he should use them to also work on the second building um, or do something with it. I understand that. Um, and I can, uh, if you have equipment there that is with it, I guess what, what I'll have to do is set, because we're kind of clear on you know, on the direction of what we want to occur on the burned out building, mm -hmm. um, being very clear on what 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 measures would we want to be done to the building adjacent. Um, I just want to just want to be one hundred percent clear on what. Well, whatever measures it takes to no longer qualify as dilapidated. So, there's probably some options. Uh, but you know, any of them would need to qualify. Yeah. Okay. I can definitely add that into the conversation. Uh, at least it, it's been a little bit of a struggle to start with the owner and then circle around to the realtor person and then finally to the son. And, yeah, it's uh, intentional. That's called their buying time. Yeah. Um, and uh, communication with uh, Ken and Martha. Before we get on, before we get off, thanks to can I add a couple of things? Yeah, please. So, number one is I think we should treat them as two separate properties, um, even though they're, they're adjacent. I think you know legally we should probably they are different parcels treat them as yeah. two separate parcels. I would very much like to see if you believe that there's a good chance that we can achieve voluntary compliance. I'm all in favor of that, <clears throat> but I would like to see something in writing from him um, committing to the timeline of June 19th for cleanup, or maybe the letter comes from you. I understand from our conversations, you are gonna clean this up by June 19th. Please understand that if that does not happen, enforcement action will be forthcoming. That would be the burned out property. With the other property, I think we have a form an inspection form, I think we should follow the inspection form. Um, I believe that requires notification to the property owner that we're going to do an inspection. Go and do the inspection, come up with the issues involved in that inspection report according to the ordinance, and proceed on that basis. Um, you know, whether that moves to the next step of you know, if he comes up with a plan on how to deal with all those issues, great. But again, I think we should have a commitment from him as to when it's going to be done. And if it's not done, we should proceed to enforce it. That's my opinion. Yeah. I don't know what other people think. But. Sounds good. So the 
or does uh, like need to get him to quantify in writing the timeline for that said property and then also start the process of inspecting the, the adjacent property? That's what I would say. And I, I would put him on notice that if if he hasn't completed his cleanup as per your phone conversation, the town will have no choice but to implement enforcement action. Yep. David, I know you've been uh, closely following this. Do you have any thoughts or comments on here? <clears throat> I should have been patient a little earlier. I think it went for uh, this meeting. Uh, but then it, it came to mind that I've been on this issue with this board for more than three years. And so when I hear that, you know, while we're talking, making progress. That's been going on for a very long time. In fact, no progress has been made on either of them. Well, one of them burned. Well, I don't consider that progress. I consider the same. Yeah, I think burned one next door. <laughs> and it's finally you know, a lot more likely having, having one of them burned down. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you know, I, I keep coming back to the bill line, to the, the, the yellow building right across from the uh, movie theater in Boston. That building has been a dilapidated health hazard for probably the better part of a decade. And the select board and Mars process in Boston on or bill because simply hasn't had the People to really set deadlines and make them stick. And uh, so it's an example of what happens when people keep saying, oh, yes, we're working on it. It has been sick. You know, the, the decisions on this property don't strike me as being terribly difficult. My best guess is that the real problem is the money. Something to get that stuff out of there. And I doubt very seriously that Williams for sure had been a little bit cleaned up or incredible. So uh, I'm thankful that I spent time here. Well, then on at least one building was a bit of a time set. And if that date comes and goes, the formal action will be commenced. And I think that will have a uh, very positive effect on your negotiations with us. And simply follow the same routine on that. That's great. Uh, I mean, a lot of people put a lot of money into a lot of the currencies and cybers. And you think of um, the old sergeant house? Was there the first one on the cemetery? Uh, was there for uh, what, five years? Anyone burned down? Yeah, uh, they got a new owner and cleaned it up. And I think they made the house that we used to live in the store a lot more valuable because you know they had a nice view and the traffic coming up the street, they see the side of the building. <clears throat> and I think that street would really be a very very pleasant place to be in, uh, in Johnson if you can take care of the wreckage on the other end of the street. So I thank you for your attention. Just glad that on and uh, on to your next agenda. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thanks. Dean, did you have more on dilapidated? Um, yeah, just um, one other thing the in the property that has been not brought to my attention was the one uh, I think it was 29 uh, Maplewoods Drive, um, the old building that's in front of the Maplewoods. Yes. 
Yep. I've been in contact with uh, with Ken and Martha Harvey. Uh, I sent Ken a copy uh, of the dilapidated building ordinance so that you can review it. And uh, and I spoke with Martha and um, and uh, hoping to speak with Ken uh, tomorrow uh, and follow up on inspecting that. Perfect. Well, Mark, I did mention that they had actually done some work and redone the entire foundation. And they were originally going to use that as their um, store for the campground, but then they realized that it was way too far away from the campground. Uh, so there has been some things that have been uh, some major updates that have been done to that. But we'll see where it lands in the inspection. Awesome. Um, yes. Thank you. And you heard the comment about the Armstrong property earlier, or were you not here for that? Uh, he was not here for that. Well, former Armstrong property, the cleanup effort. The Dixon property. Oh, the okay. Dixon property. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, no, I wasn't here, but I did actually, I did do a recent site visit. And uh, to my amazement, and I'm not sure when it occurred, uh, all of a sudden a trade was now there. A trailer is the there. Trailer is now on the property. The RV has not been moved. It has an oil tank in front of the trailer. The trailer is exactly where the RV was. And to my personal assessment of of the times that I've gone up and site visited, it basically looks like minimal might have been removed, but more looks like. Things have just been shut in. Oh, good. And so, but now we're in an actual trailer there. Don't believe I spoke with Brian earlier. Don't believe any kind of permit is like septic still in place there. Oh, yikes. Okay. Do you think it's inhabited? <laughs> so, I mean, they have a they have a porch, they have a walkway up to the, to the to the, they have the oil tank, electricity. Could you, um, I'm really not trying to cut anybody short. No, but no. I think the big takeaway uh, at the beginning of the meeting was Duncan didn't want to lose sight. Of them. Yeah, yeah, that's all. You're not would losing you be, sight. Got you it. Willing to write up kind of an email update and send it to the board. Yeah. I'm not trying to cut you short. We just <laughs> still have a lot of ground to cover. Dean, just write up your regular health report and we'll share it. Yeah. And that will work. I know. All right. Can we go on to the animal control health officer compensation update? Let's do it. All right. Thank All you. Right. He's here for this one, too. I know. I just figured I'd throw it in there. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure I would. I just got to. All right. Do you have any comments okay. on that? Anyone have comments? So this it starts on page 21. Um, I did receive comments from BJ, uh, but I didn't receive, I don't believe I received a letter from him, but I did have a conversation with BJ about that he has some concerns with this. In particular, uh, there is a, a number of the most frequent incidents that they go on are paid less under this proposal. Than they are currently. Um, our feeling with that is for th the reason for that is that uh, for the things that they do most often that don't require as much time investment, we were lowering the compensation on those a little bit while we were raising the compensation on things that were a greater time investment. What are those things? And from where are we lowering from? So we were, we were lowering, I do believe, if you don't mind. Yeah, we, please. We, we were lowering uh, uh, reimbursement for phone calls. Uh, and, and I'm also here, Brian. Hey, what were you lowering it from? Uh, currently, right now. What is it now, BJ, for phone calls? Uh, it okay, is... so uh, basically, oh, sorry, go ahead, Brian. I uh, you can go right ahead. I, I just found the email, but if you know it offhand, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, so basically, 99% of my calls is to you get a call uh, from a resident that's having issues with animals. Uh, you give them advice. Your second one is physical boots on the ground. Uh, you get a call, you respond to it. Uh, those have been 2550, and those are pretty much most of the calls. Uh, my only worry was we're going down lower nose calls and raising calls that we barely ever get. Um, I kind of looked at it like lowering your pay basically at that point. BJ, uh, can I just back. clarify when you say the first yeah. thing you're talking about, the in it, that's falls under in-person visit. Yeah. The physical is your in-person visit, uh, no matter what the call is. Um, and you also got your calls uh, when they call you, whether it's, 10 minutes or an hour on the phone with them. Yep. Okay. Uh, those are the two, those are the basic two calls that we go to the most. And generally um, and those speaking, are the ones. oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, generally speaking, like how long are you? I know that I understand there's a range, but like if you were to average your time on calls, what is your average? Uh, you're talking about per call or in the whole scope of what we're doing? Yeah, like per call. What is your average per time call, on a call? Per call, I, I, I would say an average would be 45 minutes. And then the responding, uh, I think the average is a couple hours. So the in-person versus the visit, okay. Yeah, and that's where it was 2550. Um, and that's been working out and then I, I understand the idea of raising the other ones, but when we barely go to any of those and our most of our calls and we get hammered, I mean, we get hammered a lot with calls and responding uh, for all sorts of things. Um, I don't mind if they stay the same. I was just, my problem was having them go backwards. Yep. Back. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks PJ. Thank you. Um, I am personally willing to move phone calls to 25 and person visits to 50 um, for number control. And I believe that I miss. Uh, for phone calling in person, that applies to. That applies to both. Yeah. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, the board members. This is a lot more comprehensive than the original schedule. Um, how did you how'd you come up with the numbers? I was looking at uh, incident reports over, uh, I don't remember how long the period was that you gave me, Dean, but I think it was six months, but uh, going over the different incidents that Dean had been responding to, uh, and BJ, you gave me a list also, but I think yours was, I think yours was three months. Um, but going over kind of the calls that they went on, uh, and I endeavored to, the first goal was to increase the pay for things that were taking more time. Uh, our second goal was to try and keep it close to revenue neutral. And the other factor was that we lowered the stipend so that, and then changed it to a per, we're getting paid Incident. what we are doing instead of just getting a broad stipend and they just paying the broad. That's so, primarily for health officer, right? Right. There wasn't, a, there's no stipend so for animal control. Right. Right. There was just a $1,500. Yeah. But yeah. the yeah. same thing with animal I don't think animal control had a stipend before. I think we added this adds a hundred and fifty dollar stipend yeah. to animal control. Uh, and that was kind of the effort to balance a little bit of the that we were reducing the compensation for the most common elements. But again, they're the most common elements, but they're also the least time consuming. 
So this really does, it, it eliminates the help officer stipend and puts it into a incident response. It doesn't eliminate, but it well, greatly reduces. Yeah, it reduces. Yeah. Yeah, the, the went from fifteen hundred, I think, annually. Three, yeah, to three hundred and fifty for the lead health officer and two hundred and fifty for the deputy health officer. Okay. In hold on, in the peaceful with that change, a reduction in stipend in the existing three. With the the comments that you right. you've had that that they. They're not entirely peaceful about this. They would like the the they'd like the compensation restored for right. phone calls yeah. and in person. But uh, I didn't I emotionally. Know. I said I was comfortable with it. Yeah. Uh, if they spend uh, two hours on average on an in, in person visit, fifty dollars. How much they cost if you get an apartment? Yeah, Thirty dollars an hour. Um, what were you saying, Dean? I was just gonna say I uh, for I think it was. As the health officer role, I think it was great to switch to this kind of system because, like, I had one call at St. John's Knowles with that hoarding incident, and the, I had state and fire and the plumbing inspectors and everything else. And if I added up all my time, my whole stipend went away in about two weeks. Yeah. So it, it, we, we really like the positiveness of, of and accountability. So, we're putting in a, a you know, a kind of, this is what we did, and, and we're getting compensated for the work we did in that situation. Do you generally yeah. agree with BJ's comments about the, uh, the first two items in here? Would, would it be your preference to see those bounce back up to their original figures at, at a minimum? I see it both ways. I see it as we were trying to kind of like move around a few things. Um, but I also see that, yes, even though we might have raised, you know, the bigger ones where it comes to transporting an animal or, or we're dealing with rabies or, you know, several of the other more time consuming incidents, um, you know, it does draw down those things that we just are doing, you know, weekly. Um, and you know, that time is still spent, you know, but the frequency ends up being the, I, I personally um, was okay with either direction. Yes. Um, these, sorry. Well, I guess an argument, argue, if you look at items two and three, um, the end person is no citation is issued. The third one is a citation is issued. And there's a pretty big delta between. So one one has argued that there might be an incentive to issue a ticket to get the 85 bucks as opposed to achieve voluntary compliance at 50 bucks. My uh, yeah, the thing I was gonna say is that I like these are all I think we need to be clear if this is the intention, and I'm not sure it's clear, but if the intention is that these are per incident fees that we're paying i think we, oh you do say pay per incident as follows okay so you cannot count compound animal bite investigation with in person visit they're two separate things correct yeah okay bj were you going to say something yeah i was just uh talking about i was going to say something about the citation um the odds of us yeah, we we'll definitely do it if we need to, but normally we get situations taken care of way before things like that. Um, but I definitely agree. Uh, like the dog bite call, if we get a dog bite call, you're not doing the phone call or anything. It's one call, all that encompasses that. Yeah, okay. Do you, do you folks get a fair amount of barking dog calls? At, at night and early in the morning and stuff is that yeah, Na no. neighbor, neighbors complaining at all of this dog is barking or something I, <laughs> i'm dealing with one incessantly right now um it, actually it, i am too so, <laughs> yeah, so, so you yeah, have to I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, go listen for a dog barking yeah i wouldn't say it's a 
it's a constant thing, it, but it is a very reliable call that we get. Yeah. yeah. Probably. So okay, okay, that's our, I'm glad you bring this situation up. So if you have somebody who is like just okay. complaining because they live next to a dog that barks, mm -hmm. that means we get charged fifty dollars every time you get a call, or thirty five, or whatever it is, twenty five. Well, no, that one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I just uh, you would hope that you would, uh, you know, after a couple of calls, would trying to start working with this person to, to figure out what can be done about the situation. But I can't stop somebody from right. calling my number. Right. Right. I can't, you know. If only, right? I wish you could have shown citation to the complaint. Yeah, you're not allowed to block. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll stop taking the shirt. Yeah, we, we try. Go ahead, BJ. Yeah, we try to, like a dog barking call, we try to resolve that on the first call by letting them know the law, the ordinance, and things like that, and some things just can't be dealt with. And some of the calls that we get is informational calls like that. Um, and then the other half of the time, it turns into a uh, uh, boots on the ground call. Yeah. I've gotten four calls from one person complaining about the same dog, the same issue, and then a total of 10 calls in the last three weeks. And but I cannot resolve it because it's an issue now that is now between two neighbors. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Yeah. Except they want it to they want it to do have something to do with me because I'm an entity that they think they can each manipulate into making That's somebody else patient to the complaint. Right. I know. I like that idea. Maybe we should change the ordinance. <laughs> Uh, okay. Multiple. Don't put that in the minutes, you, you Donna. You can't resolve this because there's no violation of ordinance, basically. Somebody's calling that because the dog's barking during the day. Week. They're you know, following the ordinance rules and the, the distinction of when the dog barking is, the amount of time that the dogs have to be barking for a consistency of time. And also, yeah, it's just after, after so many communications. But, uh, in terms of white noise. Right. Hello, no, I, I'm just trying to. I, it yeah. makes me makes me question. It sometimes I, uh, are there orders yeah, right that you would like a, yeah. us to make? Just like you. you know. That. Uh, yeah. That's another discussion. Are we good? Are we good with this? What do we want to do here? I just realized. Are you prepared to make that in motion. To... Sure. I don't know. Both of them said that they were. Okay with it. Uh, BJ brought up some concerns. I'm gonna say let's adopt it as presented. Reevaluate in three to six months. If if you guys feel like you're getting the short end of the deal, you need to be honest with the board. I would propose we make phone calls 25. Oh, too late. Okay, you made a motion. Motion. Okay, That's motion. It. Do we have a second? The motion was to adopt as presented. Adopt as presented. Reconvene in three to six months. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, do we have any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next Thank up, we're much, not Jane. we're not gonna actually do the naming of St. Clair because I missed the fact that Katie Buckley is on the phone. Katie, apologies. We're going, oops, shoot. We're going to do Katie and then naming of the road. Okay. All right. So, uh, Katie, yes. uh, this Hello. is. <laughs> thank you so much for being patient. Um, my pleasure. It's always fun to sit and listen to another town's business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it brings back a lot of memories for me, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, thank you for having me. I'm Katie Buckley. I am the director of the Federal Funding Assistance Program with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. ARPA falls under my purview. Um, I work with uh, Vermont's 275 uh, local ARPA recipients, helping them um, not only accept and receive all the money that came this way, but also administering the funds. So, 
Um, it is my understanding that you folks are at a point where you are doing some spending and wondering about um, the remainder of the timeline for your ARPA funds and ways to um, ensure that the money is spent within the timeline or if you need more time, how to address that. So I can speak more in depth or I can answer questions from you if you have specific questions. Um, I, Madam Chair, I am at your pleasure. Okay. Board, you had the the oddball question um, a while back. Uh, two of our board members had attendance of ARPA meetings and discussed the potential of using ARPA funds to pay for uh, general expenses, um, mm -hmm. operating expenses, and then using that money, uh, earmarking it for a future date or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And is that kosher? Uh, what are the pitfalls is the big one, I guess. Uh, and a specific question came out of that is of if you know if there's any grants or something that we would be not denied getting because we had a purse of cash for some reason? No, you can certainly do what you described initially of funding swap. So you would bring your ARPA funds in. Let's let's sort of rewind it a little bit and say that the town of Johnson elected the standard allowance for revenue loss when it did its ARPA reporting, which means you can use your full 630 something thousand dollars on the provision of government services and the strings are significantly reduced because you took that approach um, in terms of your reporting. So great job, box checked there. Um, in doing that, you can either spend directly out of your ARPA fund. I don't know how your general ledger is set up and I don't wanna get too deep into the finances, um, but you could either spend directly out of your ARPA fund you can use ARPA as a revenue source in your annual budgeting process, or you can bring your whole ARPA award or a portion of your ARPA award through your general fund, offset general operating expenses like salaries and benefits, which in doing that creates fund balance surplus, which we're most often used to hearing for what fund balance is called. And at year end, that drops to your bottom line. And what do you do with surplus? you give it to the voters and let them decide. Um, so you can create a reserve fund using that surplus for purposes that you specify. For example, you could create a grant match fund so that anything in that fund would be used for the purpose of matching future grants. It, I don't know if you have a capital fund, you could move it into your capital fund. Um, you know, Insert reserve fund purpose here However you want to do that, if you wanted to go through, it would be an article or two on your next town meeting day warning in 2024. Um, but what that essentially does is uses your ARPA as general in your general fund and drops your general fund dollars down to the bottom line. So if we were to do something like that and we were to bring it into our operating funds or GL yep. and we have a line that talks about ARPA revenue. Mm -hmm. And so we bring it in as a line. Actually, I don't even care if we bring it in. We could either bring it in as a line or offset existing expenses. I don't care how we bring it in. But once we bring that revenue into our GL, does that mean that when we're thinking about things like um, the ways that our towns show revenue for um, state school adjustments, like meaning we're now a more profitable town because we have a higher revenue source for this for this budget year would it affect anything like that or anything around um being a low income um community no Does because it... low, low income community is based on your household incomes in your community mm -hmm. not so much your municipal but budget. not town revenue so it wouldn't yeah. so no. having it be a specific arpa no it doesn't it disqualify disqualify us for any of those types of things from a not. town perspective. It does not. And um, I saw further down on your agenda there, and just out of curiosity, you have a Northern Border Regional Commission grant. You could use your ARPA funds as grant match for that. So often federal funds cannot match federal funds for grants. ARPA is unique in that it can do that. So you can either have it directly match it 
or depending upon your timeline, you need to obligate all your ARPA funds by December 31st, 2024, and they all need to be expended by December 31st, 2026. And so <laughs> while it, it felt like such a long period of time when we first started down this road, we're starting to creep into that 2024 obligation period as we're thinking about our budgets for next year. Um, and so for towns, I don't, I don't know what your projects are that you have on the horizon that you might want to use your ARPA as grants for it, uh, grant match for it. For example, your Northern Border Regional Commission grant. If your timeline for that funding is further out, then it, you might want to go the route of, of swapping it in and converting it, for lack of a better term, to general fund dollars so that you buy yourself that time. Um, we also have a handful of reserve funds out there and a most recently approved reserve fund is for grant matching opportunity. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and while reserve funds have, you know, restrictions, we understand. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's no problem with moving those into a reserve fund other than the restrictions of the fund itself. You got it. That's the biggest restriction of all. If you have a change of heart, you'll have to go back to the voters and ask for their permission to remove it from that fund. But if you have existing funds, you can certainly assign it to those existing reserve funds. Okay. Yeah, we have the reserve funds. We had, a, we had an article at this town meeting to establish a, a grant match fund. Right. It was your idea, Mark. I know. Okay. Nicely done. Well, it was his idea. It was my suggestion. <laughs> Fair. I have the idea. Uh -huh. Give it the work. <laughs> the question is: Did we cap how much we could put into that? No, it was no. a surplus for the budget yeah. last year. That was it. But there's no cap on the fund itself. But it has zero in it right now. Uh, actually, it shouldn't have anything in it until end of year. Until after right. July one. Well, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, are there any other ARPA fund? What are the questions do you have? No. I have questions, but I have not heard. So, so just to be absolutely clear, um, Katie, this is Duncan Hastings. Hi. Hi, Duncan. So just to be absolutely clear, the if we if we use the money to, to spend um, on current year budget expenses, mm -hmm. which will result in a fund balance or a surplus, um, that fund balance or surplus, we would need to have a plan and go to the voters and say, our plan is to take that fund balance and move it into the yep. reserve fund. I mean, you can either call that out as a special art. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You could call it out as a special article. You could just budget it as a transfer to whatever fund within your budget. So when they're voting the budget up and down, they're actually voting on that within the budget itself. That's what she's talking. That makes sense. Yes, it does. And traditionally, what we've done is had a proposal under the budget, directly under the budget. Yep. And the uh, select board chair has usually said, if you approve the budget, you're also approving the transfers of the reserves into the following yep. purposes. Yep. Did I adequately answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, you answered my questions. Yeah. But you, Mark, what else you got? Rosemary, do you have any questions? Yeah, Rosemary's next. You don't have any questions? No. Only thing that concerns me, and I'm saying this on public record too, is that if we do as we're as we're thinking of doing, how does that restrict us in our ability to spend our money? Right, right now. Yes, if it's in a specific, then it goes a into a specific reserve. reserve. Right now, we can spend as the select. The thing is, we haven't decided what we're doing with our ARCA money. So that's the first thing. I know. So we that, could bring it into our operating budget and not put it in a reserve fund. Um, just to keep it concentrated, is there more questions for Katie? Because she's been here later than expected already. Well, I don't know where Mark's going with this, so. I don't think, and that, I'm happy to stay on. If any other, I don't think that I need her. I do. I think I need you folks just to make nice to to make a decision as to what you know how we want that. Whether this ties our hands more, it does to to put it in reserve funds. 
unless you want to propose to the voters a reserve fund that can be spent at the whims of the select board. Well, I don't think, you, I don't think you can do more, that. More we can do it. Brian, is there anything that we haven't asked that we were talking about previously that you could think of? No, this was kind of the big thing, big things that I was aware of and where I wanted the conversation to go about that you can do this, but you need to have, you still need to have some planning for what happens with the funds afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, that just because they're freed All from the federal way. strings. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean they're, we're jumping out of one. Well, they're free from, two. okay, just to be clear then, they're free from federal funds, but we could, if we put a line item in our GL that said our ARPA revenue, we don't have to have, we don't have to show ties back to spending that revenue, correct? No. Mm -mm. Yeah, so we can be general. Just okay. simply document that you've spent your ARPA revenue on salaries and benefits, and then that drops general fund other revenue sources to the bottom line, which have no strings. Can we just make it reserved funds? You can't, so you can't directly fund a reserve fund using ARPA. That's one of the uh, restricted no, 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 uses in the, in the rule. Yeah. If we put a line in our budget, all the ARPA revenue or something. We still have to show we spent that revenue. No, we don't. We carry paving money for three years. It could just be earmarked or restricted funds. But the ARPA requires we spend it. We have to allocate it by 2024 and spend, spend it by 2026. By so we have to spend it. We have to show that we've spent it. We can show we've spent it in any line out of our expenses. Right. I'm talking about what to do with the surplus after that doesn't tie our hands. It ties back to Mark's conversation. Okay. Right. That's different. We yeah. could use it to pay for the grader and not pay so much interest on it. So I guess I guess there actually is a question there, Katie. Um, mm -hmm. Could we could we describe that? Let's say we end up with a fund balance. Yep. Could we say um, that we're reserving or proposing to reserve X amount of dollars of that fund balance for other purposes? You you can do whatever you want. How whatever article you would create a reserve fund using general fund dollars, that's what you're doing. And well, so how I'm would- not, I'm you? not saying actually creating a reserve fund. I'm saying we have a surplus and the plan is to reserve that a portion of that surplus without actually physically transferring it into a specific reserve fund. Um, do you have an annual audit every year by a professional auditor? What's that? No. No, we don't. We're getting it this yeah, year and it. next year and the following year. You're you're having an audit by an audit firm? Yes. Yep. Um, do you have the firm under contract yet or are you yes. going out to bid? Yes, under contract. May I ask who it is? RHR Smith. Yeah. RHR yeah. Smith. Okay. I'm not familiar with them. Right. Um, that would be a question I'd ask my auditor and see what their response was to that. And if they had questions regarding ARPA, they should. There are a lot of small independent art auditors that do municipal audits. Not a lot of them aren't super familiar with the ARPA rules. They're treating it just like they treat other federal funds and it's different, this type of money. So um, your question, Duncan, I would, I, would have a, I would ask the professional auditor how they'd want you to handle that. We handle only other funds that way. But that's not an ARPA related thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a finance question. Yeah. Yep. Less ARPA, more finance. And you can also let fund balance sit there. You don't have to do anything. That happens as well. Towns let their fund balance sit there and they use it for a purpose in following years. Some towns return every penny to the voters. Some towns let it sit in fund balance. There's no uniformity in municipal finance in Vermont. You don't have Walter. Mine, yeah, <laughs> mine. So that's an interesting concept. My understanding has always been that if you don't reserve a fund balance for other purposes, 
that it in essence becomes a reduction on the tax rate. It's so, open to interpretation. Except for, <laughs> except for we as a town don't do that. Well, we, we do. Not completely. Yeah, we do. I mean, in, at the bottom of our budget, we always have reserved for pay. Right. That's why I'm saying restricted for... funds. No, it's not always restricted funds, though. No, they're not restricted. No, sometimes we they're just sometimes we've suggested, you know, taking fifty thousand of the of the surplus and painting a building or putting new siding on a building or something. It's not always it's not always reserved funds. No, I said restricted. Like if you said we're going to take. $50,000 and paint the building, I would say we're restricting that from going back to the voters by doing it here. Yes, and, that, and that's that's what I'm saying is if you, my, the school of municipal finance I grew up in always, the recommendation always was the surplus doesn't belong to the select board, it belongs to the taxpayers. And unless you are specifically reserving it for some purpose, it, it goes back. You can even, even reserve it as, source, yes. You can even reserve it as other purposes. Um, you know, reserve for you know fifty thousand dollars reserve reserved for other purposes. Um, but if you didn't do that, you are essentially, you know, committing that to reducing taxes. What do you think, Rosemary? I agree with that. Okay, just checking. But you're saying there's different there's different municipal thoughts on whether you can carry a fund balance. I think if you ask an accountant, you'll get a different answer than if you ask an attorney. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no doubt about that. And I certainly don't <laughs> want to um, be providing that sort of advice at all. <laughs> considering, like I said, there, every town does their finances differently. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you could ask the question, at what point does it become surplus at year end? So if you assign those funds prior to year end, they don't ever become surplus. Right. I don't know if your treasurer is in the room. If, if yeah, she is. Okay. She agrees with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you from experience. Right, Rosemary? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And there has been a lot of progress in... Um, government finance standards over the years and there has been no progress in Vermont laws regarding municipal finance. Yeah, and I, and I should clarify by saying any 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 comment or any training that I ever received on government accounting and financing was uh Fred Duplessy from Solomon yeah. Powers and Steve Steve Stitzel from Stitzel Page and Fletcher. And at least those two two guys agreed that in concept you had to re, you had to reserve it. You had to you had to designate what the surplus was going to be spent on. Otherwise, it was going back to the taxpayers. Okay, now that we've solved that, I think, I think we're saying the same. We're thing. saying the same thing. I agree. Okay, I, I'm not hearing any new questions. Shane, are you still with us? Still early, or you are? I am sorry. Um, <laughs> I had all my questions answered as long as the one uh, about potentially um, having money in accounts uh, causing us to not qualify for certain grants. I believe that was answered as well. So I think that was everything. Cool. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. Katie, thank you thank so you much. much. My pleasure. My pleasure. If anything else crops up, just you know how to reach me, give me a holler. And I believe I'll be seeing some of you perhaps on the 24th. Yes, you will. Excellent. Thank you so much. Have Thank a good you. evening. You Take too. Care. How much are, what's the balance in our opera account? Well, we just spent $1,900, so 630 some odd thousand. Well, but we've also committed 50. We committed. Right. Well, we we've we've committed 40. Forty-two five with with uh, yep with Mumley. So we we commit close to hundred grand. Okay, so we're we're down to five sixty or something in the ARPA account. Five thirty. Yeah. Five thirty. Five forty. And are we? 
Didn't we commit more to the white industrial park? Well, we, we did get the by virtue of the fact that we made an application which said we would commit yeah, what? What was that? Three hundred grand. Mm -hmm. It was more than that. It was. I, I was in London during trying that. I think it was more. I, it, I think it was more and change. Four twenty five. Yeah. Like oh my God. Because the total amount got increased. The, the original three was based on a million dollar. I yeah, that one and that didn't I? You did. Can you please write up all of this for us? So when will we the decisions on the funding? You want a summary of all the ARPA? Okay. Is accepted. Well, our letter of interest was accepted. We now need to submit an application. Right, right. which yeah. we're, about, we're about to do. I think that's October time frame. What, what did you say? Uh, those the what? Those um, Northern Borders Regional. The application is due in mid July. Yeah, mid July. The yeah. awards are October. Oh. I don't remember. I actually don't think it's even mid July. I'm, I'm it's, really it was late June. Yeah. It was okay. late June that the application is due. Two is how much do we actually have to, you know, if we've committed 560,000 basically, 400. But there's a difference between committing and spending it before 26. And that's right. The right. I understand that. I do understand that. And I, but I'm trying to wrap my head around. If if that if the uh, northern borders does come through and we taken four hundred of our ARPA we'll money, we'll know we'll know that we'll 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 one six will we this year. Am I dragging this meeting there? Uh, I think that Brian can send out an update on this. Um, and this should be a topic that would have a longer time frame for it's ten after nine. We still have a lot of ground to cover. Um, okay, I, we do have a quite a bit potentially committed if we get that business part on a border. We have a lot committed, but we will right. we're in a different scenario. Perfect. You think you won't um, know that. So, and there's another wrinkle for that that. You could work with EDA or another granting another, you could pursue another grant to make up a portion of what you have currently targeted for ARPA money so that you might free up that ARPA money for another purpose. The purpose of the ARPA money in the Northern Borders application was to show that we could Right. pay for it demonstrate a commitment right, right. it demonstrating a commitment demonstrating that we have the resources that we will be able to complete the project if they meet their end. but you could find alternative for uh, alternative uh sources to cover to cover our right portion understood i do think we need to move on to the next item I'm with you. Um, next item on the agenda is the mowing agreement with Robert and Sons. Yep. Is that the Oregon? Is that the uh, order in which we were? Yeah, taking? we're at, we're at yeah. Robert and Sons. Um, I think actually, well, we can pick it up later, but I, I think we should be at the uh, Sinclair Road. But let's do Robert and Sons, and then we can okay. circle back to Sinclair. All right, so Robert and Sons has provided us with an estimate for next year. It is unchanged. So um, I don't know if you saw my email, but I did. The they are mowing. This is, a, is an incomplete list of all the sites that they mow. Uh, they are committing to mowing everything that they're currently mowing that they're going to continue that practice, that, that they're not dropping any sites or, or anything like that. Did they already mowed once? Unless... No. They actually yet. mowed, like, they showed up with their mowers, did a couple things, and they then the historic society. realized that they didn't actually have an agreement with us uh, that we were discussing it tonight. So they left. Given the late date involved in this whole deal, I would I would move to accept the proposal 
of Robert and Sons of $6,700 with the assumption or the knowledge that they are going to mow all of the properties that they did last year, including the wide red historical society. They absolutely confirmed that. I'll second that. Did they confirm how many times they're going to mow in a week? The goal is to mow once a week. Uh, that can be modified by weather or staffing issues. It was, they had significant staffing problems last year, so they mowed <laughs> less often. Um, they said they could price it out for us per mowing trip, um, but that would be. I don't want them to price it. I just want a refund when they don't mow. But they can break it out <clears throat> so that Rosemary is able to bill the village for the village only properties in the town for the town only properties. Rosemary has been doing that. <clears throat> and there, there's no significant change there. Um, and that's doable, right. Rosemary. But they, they are willing, they are willing to provide us a per mowing price, but they wanted it would be a decent hardship for them. That was not something that I felt comfortable asking for without a vote. Understood. So Duncan has motion, Mark has seconded. Uh, I guess we're under further discussion. I would just like to point out that the village needs to prove this, approve this yeah. as well. Yes. Um, but you can send that to Eric after a meeting. Okay. So all those in favor? If my motion was to say contingent on village trustee approval, would that be a friendly amendment you would accept? Yeah. Yeah, I would want them to pay their share. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have a revised motion. You got that, Donna? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Next up, naming of East Sinclair. So, uh, so I can take this one. Um, so there's a new construction happening on what's currently Sinclair Road. Uh, if you aren't familiar, though, Sinclair Road is not, is it a significant portion of it is the Class 4 road, and it's not easily passable between uh, the Johnson end and where it becomes East Johnson Road in Hyde Park. This particular home is in Johnson, but it's only really accessible from the Hyde Park side. So, uh, we, there's a question of should we rename that end of Sinclair Road, East Johnson Road, so that emergency responders will have a better idea of how to reach that house. And we could hopefully avoid a situation where responders came to the wrong end and, and found it impassable. And East Johnson Road is the name of the Hyde Park Road. Yes. Oh. You're talking like one road segment. I would have to get with, uh, uh, I'd have to see where the house is located. I'm not sure exactly how many road segments it, it is, but Do we have a couple. Do roads like that that are the same road and name different things on different ends? It's just like, We've and, got a couple, but it's not. Okay. I, I don't. Maps is going to have a lot of fun with that. What's that? Google Maps is going to have a lot of fun. With well, that. Google Maps already has a problem because they are already sending vehicles. Um, what's oh, the, Sinclair Road. Yeah, what's the woman's name that she used to own the pub? And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, she's the last house. Yeah. Their, Google Maps shows that as a through road. Yeah. And she's had tractor trailer trucks go in there <laughs> and get stuck. I kid you not. Um, but that, that issue aside, I. Maybe I'm mistaken on this, but and I, I I know that in Justin's email he talked about trying to have North Hyde Park assigned as the as the first responder for fire purposes. I don't think that's a call that we get to make. That isn't that a call that that the first responders get to make in terms of as I under I, I have the same understanding as you do in that yeah. case that I don't believe that. So unless something has changed that I'm not aware of when we're assigning 911 addresses, yeah. I've never assigned a 911 address and then directed 
some right. set of first responders to that address. Right. I've just I provide the address yeah. and they figure out who's and they figure it out and dispatch figures out whether they can get there or not. And so I would be I would be really reluctant to suggest that we rename a road for the purpose of having Hyde Park be the first responder instead of Johnson Fire Department because the border is the border. You know, the town line is the town line. Um, and I, I I I understand why it might be easier to some people to think if it was an if it was an East Johnson Road versus a Sinclair Road. But the bottom line is it's a it's a mark on a map. It's an address on a map. Part of that is for mail purposes. A big part of it is for emergency response. I don't think it's going to matter. Um, you know, I think they're just as likely to screw up and try and go in from the Johnson side, regardless of what the name is wrote. The name is wrote his name. So my my point is, I don't think we should change the name just because it's um, a little section of it is it, because it's more accessible for my part. Yeah. I would share that and just add that uh, maybe some communication with RJ um, and maybe you know he probably has good contacts in the firefighting community which is a arm. Of it's Ryan season. Nolan and Hyde Park. And dispatch. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, dispatch. yeah well, it's really important for dispatch, dispatch to so we can communicate that with them but we don't need to change the road name. It does bring up an interesting question I have just because it's a class four and on a section that's not heavily traveled. Has Jason been out just to make sure they're not building anything in the town right away there? Um, that has happened in the past on other areas of the town. And I think it's worth the 10 minutes if he has it. He was up there when they did a driveway permit. I don't oh, know he that he's, okay. I don't know that he's been up since. But they filed a highway access permit like anybody else. Okay, um, that's good. Did they make any actual yeah. any actual improvements to the class four section of the road, or just not that I'm aware? Of. Uh, but I just might not be aware of it. I went through there last summer on my bicycle. Man, well, going, well, going through on the Johnson side. <laughs> well, the uh, Johnson side of Sinclair Road got how much gravel two years ago? Quite a significant day. amount. Well, on the on the hill, on the on the yeah. travel portion where people yeah, yeah, I'm talking about beyond the last house. Then years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 not not passable by a normal vehicle. You might get through there in a four wheeler, but well, it's a major APV trail. I mean, the APV club just put in a big parking lot at, um, by Scribbler Bridge with a sign that said APV trailhead. But it's going to be an APV trail up through that, that road. I mean, that's a connector to that part. It is a connector to that part, yeah. Okay, what are we doing about the naming? So we're not going to. We're not going to go with the recommendation. We're going to keep it with these two. Leaving it as is and trying to communicate. With okay, Brian, you have that action? Yep. Okay, next up. Um, <clears throat> seek where us like we? we're on number 12. I had added number 11, but I'm going to do that after. Uh, <clears throat> number 12, selecting priority locations for Municipal Energy Resilience Program Assessment. Somebody uh, asked if they could be part of this. Uh, the library had, uh, they <laughs> wanted, the library would like their building included and read uh, um, fairly highly. I'm confused though, because they're going after their own grant. They're and going after a number of their own grants. They have. They want the town to go after a grant for the same thing they're going after. What happens if we're going for the Lord as a grant? It seems like duplication of services pretty heavily there. I'm just one member. Um, I did mention the library in getting an audit. Yeah. Um, but as far as prioritization, 
or do we have do we have suggestions on what we want to prioritize? The, the, so the library is already on the list. We have suggestions on what we want to prioritize. As far as priorities in getting an audit, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how this works into getting the funds. We only want to get it for what's audited. The, the funding can only go to buildings that were audited for purposes that were described in the audit. Uh, but we can allocate we're going to get the, we'll be eligible for $500,000 and we can allocate that however we want among projects that were mentioned in the audits. Did um, we get any clarification on how the old mill building is heated? If it's oil. I understand, but is it part of the oil usage oh. or not? Part of the part of the total for the total for the town garage and all of that, because remember we had the discussion about how town garage uses so much oil, but I would I like that maybe the mill house was on theirs too. Yeah, no, that's part of that sure. delivery. Yes. Yep. You remember Brian with the mill house listed out separately in that yeah. total oil total number of gallons that we did for the bid. Rosemary, do you remember more confidently maybe than I do, but. It's built separately. I don't know. It yeah, wasn't I'm pretty sure it's separate. And what was submitted in total gallon usage, it wasn't separated out. It wasn't? No. no. For those totals, though, we we were totaling up a lot of different buildings. So when on the on the RFP, it was totaled in with other shared buildings. The village, the town, the lower building, the mill house yeah. building. But it is built separately, so that that usage is separate. Largest? How many locations are we allowed? We're allowed as many as we want. There's no guarantee they'll do every one that we ask for. That's the. That's why they just need to be more than to get at least one. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're guaranteed to get one. Okay. okay. That's so my understanding. Is that so? Let's let's make this list. Then. Oh, that's where I was going. Uh, biggest bang for the buck in my mind, knowing that they have to be prioritized, would be lower storage and town garage. Is as are those one and one two, or two and one? We should have them run a string between the two of them. That way they're connected. That way it'd be one building. I like that. <laughs> uh, town garage being one, one, lower storage being two. Um, I just argue lower storage. Why? Uh, yeah. Because we spend an absorbent amount on fuel there and rec uses a lot of space. So where my head goes in maximizing funds is that whole building probably needs to be re-insulated. The library just spent $20,000 on insulation. We're not going to get a project like that in this building. So we spend a lot. We might with HVAC bulk. in this building. And, but those need HVAC and insulation. That is my point. I thought we were going to give up eating the lower building. Uh, we haven't even had that discussion with the trustees yet. But um, it doesn't have to be number two. I'm just telling you where I'm at. Town Garage yeah, one, yeah. lower storage two, uh, historic society three, library four, municipal building five. And unfortunately, old mill house, I'm putting it at six. That's where my head is. I agree with your number one. Number two, I I think we need to discuss whether with keeping that building. Does Beth and Duncan agree with number one? I agree with number one. Sure. Okay. And Shane's on the phone too. Yeah, I'm with you on number one too. All right, so town garage is number one, Brian. Do you want to rate that? I got that. Uh, uh, number two, what are you thinking your number two is, Duncan? I'm thinking is. Either the lower storage building or the old building. You got to pick one of them as your number two. You can pick with ones. with regard to the no heat in the lower building. If that were if that were the way that we went, that would change my thought process. I had a conversation with Greg Tatro, and Greg Tatro's comment was, "They, you know, Greg was actively involved in 
laying that, putting that heat system in down there. He's his concern is if you remove the heat entirely, that you risk the you know you risk cracking the foundation. That's radiant floor heat. Yeah, and then if you if you crack it and break the heating, his net the net results is he said you ought to keep some level of heat in that in that radiant floor. Because if you don't, you're on the risk. Is there a level of heat that means that number two? Yeah, number two, number two. 30 degrees. No. If we kept it, for, I don't know how much oil we use. It would really have to know that. Probably the municipal building. Yeah. Okay. It, that's. I don't care about that oil as much as I do this one right here. I think this one is okay. Right. So Beth is saying her number two is municipal building, and Mark is saying his number two is municipal building. Uh, Shane but, was so. Also, my oh, number two that's, is municipal. That's three, there you go. that's three board members right there. It's number two. Yep. Um, so municipal building number two. Should we pick a three and a four? Yeah, we should do them all. All right. So what's your number three, Mark? Um historical society. That was my number three as well. Me too. Yeah. Um, that's Beth's and Duncan's. So sorry, Shane, but you're outvoted. You can tell us what your number three is if you want. I was going to say lower storage, try to get it a little higher up on the list for you, Eben, but you know. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Don't do things for Eben. So we got one, two, three. Uh, <laughs> number four, Beth's going to go first. Uh, number four, um, probably lower storage. Okay. Uh, Duncan and Mark, what's your number four? I don't know where we Mark? I'm, I'm lower storage. Also. Shane, what's your number four? Lower storage. All right, lower storage is number four. So what we have left is old mill building in the library. We're talking five and six. So who gets five? Library. Library. Library, library, old mill. Mark? I'm old mill. Why am I the tiebreaker? <laughs> I'll switch to old mill. That's cool. All right. All right. That's fine. So old mill is number five. Uh, library is number six. And that's the current ranking. Do you have all that, Brian? I do. All right, all we needed to do was select priorities tonight so we can move on, right? Yep, I'm gonna submit this to Tori at LCPC, give her a ranking and she'll assist you with. And hoping to understand. Can you read back? Sorry, just to be sure. Sure. Town garage is number one. Municipal building is number two. Historical society is number three. Lower storage is number four. Uh, old Mill Building is number five, and Library six. Cool. All right. And hopefully Tori's going to understand we're a small community with smaller buildings, maybe we'll get an extra audit. Or three. We hope so. Is the village applying for duplicate audits? Uh, no, the village, from what I understand, the village is only asking for the village garage. Uh, it's a really good point. If you could email Eric, and just inform them that we're looking to get audits done on some joint buildings um, that don't regard the municipal building. Just a heads up, we're getting audits. We're not spending any money yet. Yep. All right. Great. Planning for northern borders. Uh, let's come back to that. Let's do the local emergency management until Duncan gets back. Uh, I'm going to motion to accept. The local advantage. emergency management plan as presented with adding Steve Hatfield as EMC2. As presented in the packet, okay. Good. Um, okay. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. That's right with what you sent uh -huh. today? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, we talked about dilapidated already. Update on let's do Northern Borders grant. You're really bouncing back and forth. With I know, right sorry. Now. I hardly keep it straight. Northern Borders. Let's do it. All right. So, Northern Borders Regional Commission uh, liked our letter of interest and they've invited us to uh, submit a proper application. Um, I, I won't be here to do that. So the board will have to figure out what they're doing, whether that's planning it in the interim, asking LCPC for assistance, 
for dropping the project. <laughs> um, it was a lot of work, so please don't drop the project. <laughs> right. Um, well, could you get us a, a would LCPC do it for the grant administration portion of the grant? Or would there be some contracts and services there? They would be eligible for some grant administration costs. I don't know if there would be any, I don't know if they'd be asking for any funds from the town or not. I can ask. Um, I can't speak for the board, but I would be interested if you could start an email and get some information sure. about it. Whether or not they could make the application? Whether or not they could, we could contract them for administrating the application or administering the application. I, yeah, I, I can just say I've um, spoken with Seth Jensen and he says they're definitely available if we are willing to uh, contract with them. And that would be for administering the grant or writing the grant or? I, what I had spoken with him about was basically just getting the grant process, the application together, um, assisting us with that. I imagine the other stuff would be a further conversation. Um, but what I had spoken about was just helping us get our application together. They do have a strong team, Duncan, Ben, and Paul. He keeps, I just, he keeps volunteering. I know. I, I just don't trying. want to keep shouldering that team with large portions of every step personally. The um, Northern Borders Grant is the most complicated and involved grant I've ever been involved with. I would not recommend even our, our very capable volunteers. I wouldn't recommend expecting volunteers for the amount of work that this is going to take. Um, I've also spoken to Seth uh, very lightly just to let him know that we had passed that first round and that I wasn't going to be here. So he was, there was a decent chance we might ask him if he would do it. And he, yeah, just like Shane, he had expressed interest in, in doing it. So what's your resolution? What's your, do you have a motion? Um, my, there's no motion needed. I was asking Brian to get information with Seth and forward it to the chair. If Seth could have a proposal for us at our next meeting, then we could motion on it, but. I don't uh, we know. Probably, we probably That's don't fine. need to, we probably can't actually wait until our next meeting to do yeah. so. Yeah, that was my because I, I believe the application is due like June 20th or something like that. Yeah, July. No, no it's June. June. So we need to do something quicker than that. Special meeting? We're not going to see each other for three weeks. <laughs> In the interest of avoiding a special meeting, uh, I will make a motion that we uh, authorize, I guess, I, I so let me think about this. Would we authorize the chair to reach out to LCPC and uh, work out an arrangement or work out an agreement for them to fill out the uh, application for us? Or is that something that we task Brian with? Um, if I can weigh in, you can task me with getting a proposal together, but if you want to- you I don't want to you to, no, I don't, you, so we have limited time with you and spending your time getting a proposal together and not doing all the other things we're gonna need to transition is not a good use of your time. I don't believe. I think that we should reach out to Seth and have him present us with something so we can keep things moving quickly. If he, there's gonna be a proposal for us to work with him, then yeah, have him present us with something. But the execution is difficult. Could, could we not have a even a phone call meeting just for the sole purpose of approving. You can have contract. a special meeting tomorrow if you want. <laughs> no, that would be an emergency meeting. Special be emergency meeting. There, right. We need two hours. days. Yeah. We just need two days. Yeah. It's true. I hope I never win an emergency <laughs> I mean we could have an emergency meeting later this week or early next week. Or 
We Hero's gonna run away. You're right. <laughs> uh, I can't say that language. <laughs> are you ready for this? What are the NPCs that really rate this? I don't know. Well, Shane is trying to propose a motion. What do you what do you uh, ask? I was trying to move forward, but what yeah, Shane, I, I I would like for us to not have to have another meeting about this if we don't need to. Um so I, I, I was going to say uh, authorize the chair to accept a proposal from LCPC. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm not sure that I'm. It would have to be to ratify the costs at a future date or something. You need to be right. the voters how much money we're, we're authorizing the chair to spend. You could say not to exceed $10,000, not to exceed $100,000. It doesn't really matter. We have to be clear. Hopefully not a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Hey, hopefully it won't be a hundred thousand dollars. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess I'm looking for a reasonable idea of what this would cost. Maybe Brian, do you know? Do you have an idea of how much it would cost typically for these types of services? Very rough, but I would. I think it would be very reasonable for it to be a couple thousand dollars. So if you said, you know, not to exceed five thousand. Okay, yeah, that's right. I'd be. <laughs> A little bit surprised if this if this did exceed five thousand. And they won't spend five thousand dollars worth of hours before our next meeting, where we would have no. a full proposal. Right. Okay. Then, um, yeah. In that case, I will make a motion to authorize the chair to uh, negotiate a contract with LCPC, not to exceed five thousand uh, dollars for the writing of our Northern Borders grant. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? I kind of heard you guys to discuss. Well, Thanks, Mark. I mean, I well, the time <laughs> sensitivity of it makes it difficult. I don't that's really. Why, that's the reason I second it. <laughs> you try to pull the second one. Negotiating a contract as a whole. I trust that. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> um, where you, they, there's a defined scope of work in the service agreement. I think that the X amount of dollars an hour I came up with the other agreement. So I should know. Can I just make a, fun, a friendly amendment that it allows me and Duncan both to be part of this? That works for me. I'm happy to reach out to Tosh and Wallace directly. Um, Is that a friendly amendment? That's a friendly amendment because I want to move. Are you all set, Donna? Yep. I think you can call it. Okay, hey, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I said aye. Okay, I stopped it. Very Didn't hear you, Mark. Okay. Okay. Moving Update along. on Scribner Bridge Engineering Study. Bridge. You know, I would like to say, Mark, that I remember a while back when the skate park. Uh, committee had come to the town and asked for, I believe it was $50,000 of ARPA money to do a scoping study for a bridge across the well. I could be wrong about the figure, but I wasn't overly surprised at the dollar figure that came out of this. Because it was less than 50000 That is a monstrous suspension bridge across the Moana River. It's literally, I you're, you work in this world more than I do. I, would I thought they were going to play some great sports. I think, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Tim. I think this sculpting study is more in depth version of well, a I, previous sculpting study. And, I, and I, maybe I, one day the town should hire a, a company to do a sculpting study of how many sculpting studies. Study. Yeah. And then we can hire that firm to do a sculpting study of the sculpting study. Okay, let's keep moving instead of keeping so, going on this conversation. Go ahead, Brian. The reason we need to do a study on this is to be eligible for construction funds. So the RFP was written specifically 
to secure a a study that VTrans would accept and contribute repair funds for in the future. So this is a multi-part process, but it is a pretty essential process to getting any repairs done on that bridge. Repairs or replacement? The goal is repairs, uh, but we don't have the scoping study yet, so they might come back and say, you know, replace it, don't repair it. And, and what what's wrong with that? The bridge abutments uh, are the major the the major structural concern. Uh, apart from that, there is some powder post beetles that we've found and treated for a couple times, and they keep occurring. And um, a number of the clapboards are have been replaced over the years, but they they need some attention. Um, you know, I mean, clapboard. You mean a vertical siding? Yes, thank you. Not not clapboard. More than that. Chip. The siding boards need have have been replaced multiple times. They need. Yeah, there's uh, of plywood right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, we ran out of historic boards. Uh, and Brian Crowley had saved a uh, had saved a bunch of boards from a barn that was being torn down that had similar weathering on them. So we could make pretty seamless replacements, but we've run out of those, but we're losing so many boards that there's something else. I think there's something else going on. I don't really think that all those boards are being, being vandalized. I think that they're, that we're losing, but they're falling out for one reason or another. So the sticky point is that the town had already obligated $6,600 right um and the scoping study came back at such a higher rate than eventually expected that the town either needs to come up with fifteen thousand dollars and change with the scoping study or figure out something else in addition to the 66 no no, no that would include it so it'd be like eight thousand dollars over okay. over what we had already committed our bridge and culvert reserve fund is well funded well yeah. i have a Grant matching fund July one that'll have twelve thousand dollars in that. Before that, before I would vote to commit to the additional money, I would really like to get an answer from Beatrice as to whether or not they can pull up any more money for the total. We can ask for a grant amendment. Uh, LCPC is doing grant servicing on this. So it'll, if we want to go that way, it's a quick email to Rob asking him. Before we spend, all I can do is say no, right? I'm supportive of that. Yeah, me too. Before Let's we figure out where we're going to. Do we have any pressing timelines? Not going to be able to. Work in terms of accepting or denying the proposal? You served on, on that. Did they, I'm not aware of any. Did they communicate anything like that to you? No. no. And that's why when I responded, I, I in front of Dan and said it has to come to the select board. Yeah. He recommended that. I didn't get any sense of her. Thank you, know, you for representing the town. The only thing that's urgent to me is I want that to stay coverage. I am going to go bananas if they recommend tear it down and put it in the cement. I think we should know. I want to see that. Let's change it. <laughs> Say what? I want to see that. Let's change There's it. There's actually a lot. Duncan had mentioned it to me. But there's a lot of money, but I have perused the orange book several times and, and other sources, and there's a lot of money out there for well, covered bridges. Covered bridge. yeah. yeah. And the Covered Bridge Society has committed to donating some money for construction. Good. Well, let's replace the Waterman Bridge and put it back to the original covered bridge. <laughs> that could be your. Project. That could be your life work. I, well, I think it wouldn't be that hard. Do it. Just We're, we support you. Do it. In the meantime, can we just tell Rob to go find all kinds of covered bridge funding sources? I actually wish covered bridges. And also, can you amend this so to really get more money? One one question I had with huh? I'm glad to see this because I read the I read the the uh, what you said and. I didn't. I read that and I didn't have any sense at all of what the scoping study was 
actually going to do. Does maybe you can tell me that is so we had we had us doing a king study, yeah, which was the flood mitigation piece yeah. of it. Is that in any way incorporated into this as a part of the evaluation? Or? It is. Yeah. Um, well, they had mentioned I'm a lot more familiar with the RFP than I am the response. It was in our RFP that we were, when we're doing this, we're extending the, the assessment and the scoping study to include the approach to the bridge, which would incorporate the low water crossing that we were denied FEMA funding for it because they wanted more engineering studies uh, to show a greater what the greater effect would be on that. Uh, so we weren't able to get FEMA funding for the uh, November storm of 2019. Um, but we still want that done. So we included it in this in the RFP for this scoping study. Uh, but like I said, I'm a lot more familiar with the RFP than I am the response. But it was yeah. supposed to be there. One of the options out of that good way kick study was the bridge. Oh, I saw a bunch of options that terrified me. <laughs> Did you look at that? What are we doing? Drained that bridge off and put it in your driveway. It would always remain a covered bridge. Uh, was... Okay, let's move on, shall we? Do we need anything else for the Scribner? Brian's going to ask for grant amendment from Rob at LFCPC. Yep. And Brian is also going to ask Rob to, is he going to ask Rob to look into other grant opportunities for covered bridges? No. I can ask him, but I no? don't okay. think that's going to go with it. So, I don't think that would be a logical follow-up if the scoping study is approved. And I think that right. one would apply for yep. those additional Okay. Okay, next up, revolving loan fund update. So a uh, quick update on the revolving loan fund. I don't think that there was support material for this, uh, but we did go up with a social media post. Did we skip the limp? No. You, already did it. you were in the bathroom. Okay. Um, for the revolving loan fund, we put out the social media post, uh, started a little bit of marketing around that. I've also been in touch with the state about uh, kind of the conditions during the pandemic, and they are extending our grace period on uh, making loans well, under the understanding that nobody was taking loans of this type during that time. How much were they taking? They were not specific about that. I think they were still figuring it out themselves. Woodward Properties needs a loan. Well, it's uh -huh. a lot. <laughs> I I think we should. This is a discussion for for a different day, but I think we should also talk with CDBG folks to see whether or not we might be able to change some of these conditions for that long and long time. Who for, is it that we would talk to? Uh, community development. Um, agency of Commerce. It's ACCD is the agency. <clears throat> I think it's Anna Kroll is our point of contact there for this. Yeah. And she still is. She's actually also administering the Jenna's Promise. So she's been in Johnson recently and we continued that conversation about our revolving loan fund. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, we that revolving loan fund has some pretty strict requirements, which I think part of the reason why a lot of people haven't, you know, jumped on it. Um, but I think the town is limited to the possibility of lending itself 50 grand out of that. That's a lot less clear if I recall. The, the way the rules were written was that the town that normal grants were going to be up to $50,000. And that if there were extenuating circumstances that could be enlarged and we could grant over, or we could loan over $50,000. Yeah, thank you, loan over $50,000. Um, and if I remember the conversations that you and I had with Anna when we were writing the rules for this was that the town would be considered a normal applicant. The town would be considered a normal applicant and the town making a case to itself <laughs> that it deserves an exemption to increase the size of its loan would 
no bias there. That th- that would be looked at with a pretty skeptical eye. How much money is in the fund at the moment? Uh, around two hundred thousand. That's a low interest rate account. <laughs> Stop it. Why are you doing that? We're almost to the meeting. Because we're already a oh half hour behind. Anyway, uh, you know, perhaps we can keep that on our agendas for yeah, that, future dates. That is important. Because I would love to see the people out. I think Brian would agree with me on this. Below. The agency did not want us, they wanted us to take our money and give it to some other statewide aid entity. Mm-hmm. and let them loan it out and they weren't willing to make any commitments that any of that money would come back to Johnson. Can you can you give me a little update on this, did Where this there, stuff there more? come out of your loan for the grocery store? Yes. yes. And they we got mm-hmm. money, gave it to them, they gave it back, they paid it off. It was a total of five hundred thousand loan. Mm-hmm. Um they paid it entirely off. Um the town got two fifty of that. For its revolving loan fund. Okay. Okay. But they did not want to give it to us. They really mm-hmm. wanted us to turn it over to some right. Yeah. Entity. But, but we have it, so we should use it. Yes. We should. And if we don't, that's that's the issue. If we don't use it, they can call it back. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. Yep. Okay. That's the hope. And so we you guys want to turn it. Beth is giving me that. I'm all waiting. Tired eyes. No, keep asking. It's good. Bar, foods that we I'll eat. let you know when I'm sick of listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Gia, ask more questions. Now's the time. Oh, I will, we, we adjourn. Wrong. Next we, item. We got at least one more. We have at least one more. No, we have two more. We have three more. What? Uh, oh, two more. Yeah, yeah two more. I, okay, economic. Here a second. Are we done with the uh, with the revolving yes. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Um, so what? Are we, sorry, no, we're not because somebody's going to follow up with Anna. Whatever her last about name is about changing the rules. Yes. Or okay, that's that's way far in the future. That's definitely not a me. Yeah, problem. that's a that's a lady. We should, if we can keep that on our on our list of items. Okay, a thing you could do, can you add it to the agenda list? Actually, yes. I'll add it to the agenda list while you're talking about the next thing. Okay. Um, economic Development Roundtable discussion. So this is coming together pretty well. We've got uh, almost all of our, uh, the folks we're inviting are going to attend. The only no that I have so far is we did invite the directors of the Northern Borders uh, Commission to come to attend with us and they're not going to be able to make it, uh, but they are going to meet with, uh, at the very least, they're gonna meet with the Vermont Council on Rural Development on our behalf about this at a future date. Sweet. Uh, But we're getting somebody from Sanders' office, we're getting Welch's office. Um, I don't remember if, uh, we're getting something from balance office or not, but uh, yeah, our our response has been very good. Good. So if this is moving along, we're moving along, meaning people are accepting. But what else is happening? I hope you're going to Canada. We have plans meaning- for the 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 event. We've got refreshments that we're serving. Uh, our attendees, yeah, we're we're in a pretty good spot. Jane, Jane, are you yeah. coming? When do we? Uh, yeah, that was the plan. Was yeah, yeah, it to... starts at ten a.m. goes to twelve thirty. Who um, is sending out invites? Official invites. So the official to... invites are going out from Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, early this week. You're, you're able to come back. And they're including the people that are in that spreadsheet? Yes. Okay, they have access to the spreadsheet because I updated it last end of last week. Okay, uh, they do have access to it. They, they... Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, that's something I don't hear very often. <laughs> 
And okay, so they're sending it out to everybody on that list. Okay. Okay. Yep. Are we getting a copy of it? The select board members? I will add the select board members to the list. I, I think they're making up the email list from that. Did you say you were coming to Yeah, I'm going to be here. Yeah. So there's going to be a quorum. We'll have to it. We have to warn it anyway. It's fine. We should warn it. Uh, okay. They tell what country we can get. Canada. Good. Canada. Maybe out in Alberta. I'm going up there for agriculture. Okay, good. That sounds good. Um, can you loop me into the correspondence that you're having with all of them? Because I want to make sure that it, like, I want to be in the loop when that's okay. happening. Because uh, I think I'm going to be the one here that day. I expect so. I, I'm not planning on attending. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, updates on communi community economic development. Huh? MTA search. Search. Um, so very quickly, I've been in touch with, uh, I think everybody knows I've signed the contract with Alan Jewell at MRI. Um, I circulated an email to everybody about being willing to volunteer to do the advertising for the community economic development person. I've got an ad drafted. Um, I let Alan Gould know that we were going to do that. And he emailed back and said, up to you, but just so you know, it might not be the best timing in the world to advertise when there's a possibility that we might find a good full-time candidate for both positions. And I said, I understand that, um, totally get that. My concern is that if we wait the 30 days before you know, getting applications in and we don't find somebody who's any good, we could be anywhere from four to six weeks further down the road. Um, and he said, he emailed back and said, I get that, I understand it. The other risk is that you won't find anybody to do either as a part-time job. So I said, I would bring it up to the board tonight, um, you know, let them know, you know, where we were. Uh, so I guess I'm asking for your input. Should I continue along the path of advertising for a community economic development specialist? Um, and have him continue along the path of advertising with the possibility of turning it into a full-time job, combining two positions. Why are you kidding me? <laughs> are you? Make, make sure you're staying away. Thanks. Are, it sounds like he's implying having the two positions open may disqualify two positions in some candidates' minds. I think he was more implying that if we if we found somebody that was good for community economic development and he found somebody that was he felt was a really qualified person for uh, the combined uh, position, uh, oh, I see. that we'd have That's to then make a decision I see. and that those two things uh, might I be the right way. Personally, I don't care. I tend to lean more towards that one's thought process. I'm just one member. I mean, the thing is, it's a conflict of interest for him. So, like, he's just saying it makes his job a little harder. Right? We're paying him to do his job. Well, he's. Did he say the risk was that you make my job a little harder or you run the risk? The other potential risk is that you get my, a candidate for neither. Um, I think we're going to get a better candidate pool of full time people. Just my feeling. I do too. Well, but I don't either think of it... those positions are listed as full time, like forty hours a week full time. Anyways, the only the only and Alan did also acknowledge. Yes, he said at thirty two hours a week and full health benefits that that sweetens the pot a lot for the candidate pool for our 32 versus 40. At 30, well, 
we do pro rata on 32, don't we? No, on health insurance, if you work under federal law, if you work 30 hours a week, that's considered full-time. Right. For the purposes of insurance. So we do offer full. We basically offer full on, on the health. We prorate the dental, but we would, you know, they'd be basically getting full vote on the, well, they'd be getting, they'd be getting 90% because the employee normally pays 10%. I, I think the 32 hour is gonna be very attractive. I think I could be. There, there are people out in the world that don't want to work 40 hours. Yeah, I think it's more, and more, more and more of this younger generation doesn't want to work. Well, we're not, we're not hiring both these positions as 32 hours. No, yeah, no. Yeah. The last one. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. How many hours are we looking for a TA? Well, the under the current scenario that was voted on, it was 32 hours a week for the TA, 24 hours a week for the okay. I that reversed in my head. No, I think we. I, I'm I'm still not sure which way I believe we should advertise this, but I think 32 hours for the TA is. I know. I think that's. Good. Right, right amount of hours, and we'll get. We'll get that. I think we could get just as many applications at thirty-two as forty. I agree. I agree. But I'm so, an old school person, you know. We know. I want somebody yeah. that wants to work full time. Yes. Yeah, you're one of the guys here. Yeah, you are old school. <laughs> Oldest mentality in the room, though, apparently. Very true. I don't want to work more than thirty-two hours a week. Do you know? Don't want to, but it has. So we could pull this one really quick. Everybody knows where I stand. Mark's on the fence. Where do you stand, Beth? You said you don't care. I know. I'm just saying that I don't care about a conflict of interest in terms of thought. But okay, I'm literally just fighting with myself. Shane, what do you want? I'll tell you in a minute. I'm in the same spot as I was last time. I think we should try to advertise them together. And uh, I think I agree with Evan. It's probably going to get us you know the best candidate that way and i also kind of think we've uh asked alan and mri to do the job and if they're telling us it's going to be easier for them to do it a certain way we should we should listen to them we should listen to them so the so they're telling us a full-time not two part-times right so you want a full-time not two part-times well, I should also point out. I, I, I would prefer to have, uh, you know, like I think I said a couple of meetings ago or maybe last meeting, uh, I think one one good full-time person do can do both jobs. And uh, I think it, that would benefit us greatly. And I also hear the concern that we might not find anyone if we go the other way. Don't hear what you're going to say. I was going to say that the assumption at a full-time person is that he can find a highly qualified person for community economic development and town administrator. And I don't think that's a foregone conclusion. So it, it works if we've got the right person who can juggle both balls and in the time frame of 40 hours a week. If it doesn't, it doesn't work and we're still behind the eight ball as far as community economic, advancing our goals for community economic development. Yeah, there's a risk either way we go. There is. Yep. I acknowledge the one that you're talking about. I'll have to the people. So would you be in favor of simultaneous advertising? Yeah. All right. I guess that leaves the tie break up to you, Beth. That's a beautiful drawing. I'm with Mark and Duncan on this one. All right. So I think that answers your question. It does. So the other thing I would ask you is, um, are you guys okay? Um, I was going to advertise in the free advertising places like the LCK and maybe from our planners association. Um, are you okay if we put an ad in seven, seven days online or some other entity? That cost money. Um. So before, you, sorry, yeah. but did we, you say BLCT? Yeah, That's you already free. said that. BLCT said. classifies as free. From what, from what planners association would be a free. Um, 
I'm just going to pause the yellow about finding um, economic developers that person that's dynamic and young and can we advertise? Well, we don't hire based on age, so. Dynamic. To your point, I think I know what you're going to say. To your point, I did reach out to Fred Schmidt, who used to run the Center for Rural Studies. Um, Fred is retired, but he said he would be happy to get in touch with the person who's running the program and circulate both a job ad and a job description. I totally to thought you were going to say, what about the newspaper, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the will, oldest person in the room. Yeah, will, will we be criticized if we don't at least run one ad in a, in a, in a local paper? I'm kind of leaving this one up to the three of you. Right? No. Yeah. I have no opinion on this one. I throw it away. I literally don't open it. That's so wasteful. Don't give it to me. You don't read the news and citizen? No. You don't even recycle it? Well, there's an online research. You just said you throw yeah, it Yeah, I look at a couple articles online on occasion, but I really don't read it. I don't need to be up on gossip. I'm good. Um... <laughs> My diabetes is sugar. So I don't care what we do. I think we should. Well, do, you want, do, you want, do you want more commission? To, I mean, I think seven days combined will get you exposure to seven days uh, is expensive. Power. Seven days is expensive. Yeah. I think it's not true. Are you, is this in the you can pick it up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Deed is also yeah. very yeah. expensive. I don't, I don't think you can walk that. No. I, we've never gotten any. Is Any it too, good candidates from an, indeed. Is it too late to pull out my old idea? Billboard on the side of the dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do that. They have a banner on the side of the building by me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Um, it's gonna be hired. Looking for help. Could you guys make your mind up, please? In all the wrong places. I'm supportive of. The general consensus on the board on this. I don't care where we push it. But, uh, we should push it on LinkedIn, though. I think I know. So, so Beth LinkedIn. doesn't care, but she cares. Uh, well, LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn. I'm, I'm in favor of LinkedIn. Too. LinkedIn? Yeah, LinkedIn. What about Twitter? Just send it to me. I can push it out on LinkedIn. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't you look surprised. I don't, you have look... A, I don't have a LinkedIn. Can you, I don't post, don't can you post it on Snapchat? Yes, Instagram. I can. We want dynamic. I can put it on Instagram. Too. Kevin, why don't you post it on Snapchat? Because I don't have one. Well, that's probably a good reason right there. <laughs> I don't either. I thought it I'll post it wherever. I'll post it on different channels, uh, social media <laughs> channels. Like channel three? You can get the ad there, sure. I'm ready to call the music. Okay, ready to call it. So, what do you need, Duncan? Do you need anything? I know we're trying to. I, I guess if you if you agree that it's worth trying to put it in um, seven days uh, on their online classifieds, I can look into that. Yeah. If you don't think we should do that, I won't. I would like to see it on it personally, but we need to determine how much money we're willing to spend on it. All right, not to exceed five hundred bucks. There's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Me. Aye. Aye. Very good, Duncan. What are you going to say, Brian? I was, before we break up for the evening, Beth, two items ago, you said we had three things that I we lied. had to fit in. Nope, we got them all. Okay. That was all I needed. No, I don't think. But oh, if we do, I won't. Or if I do. I'll... Yeah, we got everything. Okay, meeting adjourned at 10 12. Beautiful. Thank you, Donna.